Welcome to Live with Elder Kabir, where we are reminded to be faithful in the little. I am the voice behind the scenes, Deacon David. Today we have an encouraging show for you. Please watch till the end, and we hope you are blessed by this live stream. Hey, Shalom, Shalom, Saints. Thank you guys for being with us here for another live stream with Elder Kabir, myself. Um, hey, I just want to give all praise to the Most High Yah uh, for just everything. I mean, he is just an amazing. I'm so thankful for this ministry, Strictly Truth Ministry, led by our shepherd, Pastor Charles Dow Jr. And um, so we have a great show for you. Sorry for... Uh, getting on here late. This is not like us, but we were having some technical difficulties. So you already know that Satan does not want us to get out. Exactly. Uh, so we are, we, we were determined to get the, we labored to get this thing in no matter what. And uh, so, Hey, I'm going to let Deacon take it away and um, get the thing started. Yeah. We had a, uh, we had some microphone issues here, Saints, and, but we figured out a uh, backup plan and hopefully I'm coming in uh, well. Uh, can you guys give us a sound check real quick in the chat? Let us know how we're coming in, how others coming in, um, and give us a ten for great and a zero for not so great. Let's see here. My mic is my camera coming okay. Yeah, how can you bring your mic a little closer? Sure. Testing one, two, three. Testing one, two, three. All right. Sounding good. Perfect. Uh, Louis, how are you doing today, Elder? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. It's been a uh, it's been an interesting week. Um, <laughs> yeah, you can say that again. Extra, I'm looking forward for the Shabbat, and uh, it's been inter interesting, and uh, especially uh, since being an elder, you know, you see a lot behind the scenes of what's going on in the ministry here, and uh, it gives you a uh, it's sobering. It gives you an appreciation for those who's uh, been leading. Yeah, uh, like the other, uh, like Pastor Dow, obviously, and the other elders and teachers and deacons, it gives you appreciation for how they have labored for so many years. And now, um, as a young elder, uh, meaning just uh, my tenure here, um, just less, than, just literally just uh, less than a year, um, but it gives you an appreciation and a love for this ministry. Um, I really love. Uh, I just didn't see this in Christianity. I, I didn't see the type of love that you see from the leadership and the men of Yah who are leading this ministry like Pastor Dow. I mean, this is they're really about the work of uh, the Most High. Um, so it's just it just like it just makes I'm just in awe. I'm just in yeah. awe. Like, wow. You guys are really doing this by the book. For real? For by real. the book. <laughs> I just. So anyway. Uh, I, I hope I answered your question, Deacon. As yeah, we... no, yeah. That, I, I would uh, have to touch and agree. Um, like we said before in the past, I think even in the last live stream that uh, we noticed how wide uh, the leadership, uh, how wide the shoulders are to carry carry mm -hmm. the the heaviness and the things that have to be that have to be taken place in terms of judgment. I mean, this is what we're called to do, right? To mm -hmm. rightly divide the word of Yah, to rightly judge. What was the thing that Solomon, when he became king, what did he pray for? He prayed, he prayed for, for wisdom. He prayed for wisdom, right? Because he understands that in, in a position of leadership, you're going to need that, that mm -hmm. wisdom to make sure you're judging righteously according to Yah's word. So, And being an elder too, and you know, um, when, you, when you've been, um, I watch my words when I say this stuff, but I, it's fortunate, you know, when you're when you're fortunate that the Most High Yah has uh, called you to be an elder or a leader in the ministry uh, in His kingdom. It's 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 sobering, it's humbling, um, but at the same time, you see why it's so important to get uh, men who have their own house in order because a lot of things uh, that you uh, learn on ruling your own house is it, applicable to leading. Uh, being a, a leader in Israel and when you're leading people in um, in the ministry as well. Uh, so you can see the app. And to be honest with you, it really just starts with even just you being a good follower, first of all, you know, learning how yeah, to yeah. be a good follower, a good servant. 
And 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 if you do well, your your gifts will make room for you and put you before great men. And then eventually they'll say, Man, this guy is doing well. You get your own woman, and from there you have your woman, your first possession, and you have seeds from there, children, and then from there you start learning to rule. And eventually you 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 do such a good job there, people are gonna say, Hey, we need you, we need more of this type of leadership in Israel, you know. So um anyway, it's just like I said, I, I'm in awe of this ministry, this uh, just seeing how uh, straightway truths take care of the widows, how they take care of just different types of uh, situations that come up in the ministries with judge. It could be. And I'm not guys. I'm not I'm not I'm not saying I'm in awe about this ministry when things are all good. I'm, I'm in awe in how the ministry responds to the things that they have to deal with with the saints, you know, judgments the love the 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 labor i'm talking about the love the labor of love i i just i mean i'm talking about to the points where you have ministers elders pastors traveling to deal with issues that could be happening in a different community and is not convenient these i mean i mean i i'm just thinking about the time when i was going through my 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 deal when i was uh in the world in christianity married and i couldn't even get pastors who are literally just minutes away from me, less than 30 mm -hmm. minutes away, and they couldn't even come and to adjudicate matters. They couldn't even come to my aid or to, to bring me rebuke. Even when you want to meet with them, they avoided you. Like I literally came asking to I had to go to the secretary and ask, is the pastor here? Is the pastor here? Oh, he's busy. Every time I came every day faithfully, sat in the sitting room, everything came. Oh, I got. I got things to do. I got to take my wife out to lunch. I went to church service after church service. Busy. Just don't have time to, to not even, not even, not, it's not even, uh, uh, pastors are busy, but even, even the ability to be able to say, hey, I can't meet with you right now. Let's put it in the calendar. I will meet with you first day, second day, Tuesday, Wednesday, whatever. No, just avoidance, avoidance. So, um, that's what makes me an all. I, I I literally see the love in this ministry, and I'm saying I'm saying this under uh, 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 not seeing things all perfect, but seeing things when when the Israelites and the saints are not doing what they're supposed to be doing, and seeing how this ministry responds is such a loving ministry. And uh, I mean, I think you can say the same thing too, Deacon. Please don't let me put words in your mouth, but I mean, what do you think? Do we lose Deacon? I think I'm, no, no, I'm, I'm, I'm here. Sorry about that. You have technical difficulties. So that may be on my own here. No, no, no. You, you, I'll I'm leave you hanging, Deacon. No, I know. <laughs> you are the <laughs> voice behind the mic. We're here. We're you here. We need the we're voice. Here. We're here. <laughs> but anyway, so, hey, let's get into it, guys. We're going to get into it, guys. One of the things that's uh, that's inspired this uh, today's live stream is the lack of leadership I'm seeing in Israel. I'm seeing the lack of leadership in homes. Men not knowing how to lead, you know. I know, you know, when when you you you, you know, we are in a patriarch ministry, and I, especially if you've been watching me, I'm really am hard on the uh, on the sisters. I'm really hard on on the brides. But guess what? If you really have been watching me, you know when I say bride, I'm talking about all of us because we are all in the position of bride, some way, somehow. Men, you're the bride of uh, the Messiah. Women, you're the bride of your husband. If you don't have a husband, you're the bride of your father. If you don't have, if it's, if you are, if you are a single sister in the ministry, you're the bride of the person that's ruling over you. It could be a community head or a, a lead assembly leader or whatever. But regardless, we are all brides, starting with Pastor Dow all the way down. We are all some form of a bride. And then there's times we may be the Messiah in some lives. So, um, but I, this, this thing was really inspired because of just some of the things I've seen and seen in, in the next generation coming up, men need to know how to lead. You got to understand that when you get these sisters and you, you, you have, you, you're fortunate enough to, to cover a woman, you got to understand she's not going to come uh, perfect. She is the weaker vessel, okay? There's a reason why she's a weaker vessel. She needs a leader. She needs a head. She needs either a father or a husband. Mm -hmm. She can't do this on her own. She needs help. So let me use this. Uh, let's start off with a picture 
I want to start off with a picture here and then we're going to go to scripture. But I want to use a picture of a jockey and a horse. OK, if you know anything about a, uh, a, a, a racing, right, you have these beautiful beasts called a horse. I mean, these thoroughbreds, they are, they, I mean, they are very muscular, very fast, very powerful in many ways. And, you know, when you're doing these race, there's rules, you know, to win the race, the horse must have the rider. You cannot win the race without your jockey. So if, if, if it happens to be that a, a, a jockey falls off the horse, guess what? That, that horse is disqualified. Women should be looking at that like, man, I cannot be headless. I don't want to be headless. A headless woman is going to go straight to the pit of hell. Are you guys hearing me? And, and all these men out there doing their own thing, if you don't, if you're not being submitted to Messiah, truly being submitted to Messiah, you're going to go to hell as well because you are headless yourself. You think you're, well, I'm the head and it's just me. And myself, but who, who's a witness? Who's going to, and we're going to show you this all biblically. So I'm just kind of giving you a, a flyby of what we talk about. But this is the picture. I want to make this very concrete. You have a picture of a, 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 a horse and a, a man that's riding the horse is called a jockey. And that horse is very powerful, but it needs somebody to guide it through the race. That's what it, it needs. It, it has all this power, but it needs somebody kind of leading it, leading it. And, you know, you may have a woman that may be uh, maybe a little bit more spiritual than you. you. In your mind, you may think she's more spiritual than you. You may she may be able to know how to write. I know I, you know, I'm not the best writer. You know, I remember when I was in college, I wasn't the best writer, but I had a girlfriend who could write very well, but she still needed me to tweak it and make it sound like my voice and to, to, to get my ideas on the piece of paper. So she still needed my leadership, even though she had the, the gift of writing, but she had to, I still had to lead and structure it in such a way to say, okay, I need you to say this. Well, can you make it say this? And then, but she knew the rules. Okay. We can't do this and preposition this and that and verbs and adjectives and okay. But I needed to say this and this is how I needed to come out, make it happen. And so as a man, you got to learn how to lead and teach. So anyway, um, I don't, do, do we have that? Uh, 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 that's all we have. Do we have, a, do we have that uh, horse without a jockey? That's it. Yeah. See, you see that right there? This is what we want to prevent. We don't want the bride running without her jockey. This is a, this, this horse has been just, if this is a race, this horse will be considered disqualified, will not make it. Right, right here. R read that, Deacon. They're disqualified when the rider falls off. The rules of racing requires that a horse has to carry the full weight that he was assigned to carry for the full distance of the race. Every race for running horses specifies the weight the horse has to carry. So there you have it. So. A horse, the glory of the horse is the jockey. The jockey is the one that's going to make this horse. But yeah, everybody hears about the about the horse, but really that jockey is the one that's kind of leading that horse. So anyway, let's go into our first scripture. We're going to read out of, we're going to start First Peter, and we're going to start chapter 2. And it's going to be long, guys, but I want to show you guys something here because I think a lot of you men, you lack uh, the, the, the wisdom to lead your home and being a part of this amazing ministry. If you're a part of straightway choose ministry, we have great examples before us in, in this time in yeah. pastor Charles Dow jr. And the elders and the leaders. I mean, that's the people that have been put before you are supposed to be a good example, but we know for sure. I, I can say, I can testify pastor Dow is a good example. He's been doing this for 30 something years, 30 plus years. And he's been leading the way, starting with his own home. He was ordained. He, he, didn't, he didn't make himself a pastor. He was ordained a pastor in wherever, uh, uh, I believe uh, he calls him Bishop Mulberry. Was a, somebody yep. ordained him. He had a witness. They had a witness about him and made him a pastor. Eventually, uh, y'all called him and, you know, Hey, he got, he even got, he didn't just leave the ministry. So while I'm leaving, boom, he, he told uh, uh, the, the leaders of the church that he used to be a part of with 
uh, Bishop Marbury told him about this whole thing about communities and things, and he didn't think it would work, but he got his blessing. He says, okay, we'll see. Let's see. Because it could be of Yah, you know, let's see what becomes of this stuff. And pastor has been doing this at 30 years, and he's still doing it, and the ministry is growing by the leadership of Pastor Down, his example of how he follows. And we know he's following the Messiah because of the fruit. I mean, I'm a perfect example of one of his seals of his apostleship, of his being discipled by Pastor Dow. Everything I'm doing is because of things I see Pastor Dow's doing. And I'm glad he's gone before me because when I run into things that I, I, I don't say, I'm like, how do you handle this stuff? I'm so amazed. Every time I call Pastor, I never pass it. Hmm, I've never ran into it. It seemed like Pastor is aware of it. He said, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, this is what you do. Boom. And he gives me, boom. And so I'm able to get out of that situation or be able to resolve that. And I try not to call pastor. I'm not one of the, those elders that tries to really bug him. And I mean, I could, but I don't want to because I want to be able to handle my own house well. I want to be able to rule well. Now, if I if I, if I run into a situation, I got to humble myself. Just like a husband, a man needs to humble himself and ask for help. Hey, I need help. I don't know what to do in this situation. You know, so um, I don't mind doing that. So anyway, just want to give the example. So let's start off here, 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 13. We're going to read. And guys, I want you guys to check my work. This is, That's part of leadership. You know, we're not going to have everything on there, but I want you guys to check my work, read before it, after it, and see the things that I'm saying if it's so, okay? I'm not here to, you know, commentate. I just want to just show you in the word and try to give you guys instruction because a lot of these homes are not going to make it if men are not doing their part. Yeah, women got to do their part. We get it. Women got to do their part. But men, you got to be the example, just like our Messiah was an example to us. And I'm going to show you. We're going to read through this fast, and I was, I'm going to really slow down on, on parts that I really want to highlight, but I wanted to kind of get a little bit of context. So please read, Deacon. Submit yourselves to every ordinance of man for the master's sake, whether it be to the king as supreme or unto governors as unto them that are sent by him for the punishment of evildoers and for the praise of them that do well. For so is the will of Yah, that with well-doing ye may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men, as free and not using your liberty for a cloak of maliciousness, but as the servants of Yah. Honor all men, love the brotherhood, fear Yah, honor the king. Honor the king. Okay, keep going. Servants, be subject to your masters. Now listen to this, guys. This is, it starts off, it goes on and now going to show us how to do this. Be servants. We have to have a servant mentality. A lot of people want to be the leader, but they don't realize to be a good leader, you need to be a good servant. Mm. You need to know how to obey so you can teach those who you ruling over how to obey. So you can be able to show them through examples. And we're going to go through that. Read, servants. Servants, be subject to your masters with all fear, not only to the good and gentle, but also to the forward. For this is thankworthy, if a man for conscience towards Yah endure grief, suffering wrongfully. For what glory is it when ye be buffeted for your faults? Ye shall take it patiently. But if when ye do well and suffer for it, ye take it patiently, this is acceptable with Yah. For even hereunto were ye called before Christ also suffered, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that ye should follow his steps. Stop right there. See, look what it says. It says, for even hereunto where we were called, because Messiah also suffered. For us, leaving us an example. Men, ask yourself, are you leaving an example for your woman, for your seed, your children? Are you leaving an examples? Even as a leader, I'm, I got to ask myself, Elder Kabir, are you leaving an example for the people that you're leading in this community here at Straightway Praise Land? This is I mean, so guess what? And so if 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 Messiah is an example, then we should study what the Messiah did. How did he serve? How did he how was he a good bride? He what was his what was his life all about? And so we're gonna go into that. 
But let's keep reading. Who did no sin, whether neither was guile found in his mouth? Are you there? Yep. Who, when he was reviled, reviled not again? When he suffered, he threatened not, but committed himself to him that judges righteously. Sorry about that, Elder. Give me one second here. Who so his you, own self bear? Okay. I'm sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead, finish. Who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree, that we being dead to sins should live unto righteousness, by whose stripes ye were healed. Mm. For ye were as sheep going astray, but are now returned unto the shepherd and bishop of your souls. So listen to this. So you have Yah, um, Yeshua coming down here on earth, doing the will of his heavenly father. He, he, was, he was always about his father's business. From, from, from when he was a little boy, he was always about his father's business. Even when he had to, even unto death, even when he had to go to the tree and die a horrible death, even when, even when he was at such a, a stressful time in his life where he says, if this cup may pass, and then, he's, and then he quickly, quickly comes back and says, not my will, but thy will, your will, his father's will be done. You see, he didn't murmur. He didn't complain. He didn't revile when he was reviled at. He didn't, he didn't bitch, complain, murmur like we do. He didn't do all that stuff. He gave us an example. He was obedient unto death. He gave us the perfect example on how to be good servants, how to be a good bride, how mm. to be a good brother, how to be a good husband. We got our example right here. And guys, you, you, you think that we were the perfect bride for Messiah? Do you think that we came in all pre-packaged? No, we were stiff neck. He actually had to come here to redeem us, to save us from ourselves because of our sin, because of our disobedience. He didn't say, yeah, what am I supposed to do? He came down here to redeem us. And so many people are so quick to blame their woman, but they expect more from their woman than they expect from themselves. And they're not even doing the very thing that they expect their woman to do. Come on, Elder. You don't want her murmuring and complaining about the things that you're doing, but then she's watching how you do with leadership or the lack of leadership. You just do, she just see you doing your own thing. She don't see you follow Messiah. People say, well, Pastor Dow, who is he submitting himself? He submits himself to Messiah. We can see it. You know why? Because when we look at Pastor Dow's life, we see his life in these words, the things that he's teaching us. He's able to teach and push and demand things out of us because he's doing it himself. Exactly. That's why you don't see, so I'll give you an example. How often do you see a fat pastor challenging his congregation not to be fat? <laughs> they don't do that. Why? Because Never. they haven't overcome. They're not doing it. So they're not going to tell their, their fat. They're not going to uh, tell their uh, congregation who is uh, fat and overweight. They're not going to tell them that because they're not doing it. Facts. So, and, 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 but, but, but men are so bold that they will tell their women to do things that they're not even doing. Now, even these wicked pastors, at least I can appreciate it, man. At least you don't challenge them in areas that you're not doing yourself. All right, let's read. So, so after we hear about Yeshua's example, he says he left us an example. Then he goes into the very first thing. And I'm going to read really through quick today for the, for the sisters, but I really want to get through it. But I want to get to the guys because I'm really focusing on the brothers to the, uh, on this segment, on this live stream. Read. First Peter 3, 1. Likewise, you wives, be in subjection to your own husbands, that if any obey not the word, they also may be may without the word be won by the conversation of the wives. Behavior. Conversation means behavior. And guys, this, this is a good segment right here. Segue for the sisters. Just because what you're about to hear, don't this is not an opportunity for you to see, look at that's why I don't need to follow. I'm I'm acting up because of your example. No. See, women have their instructions too. Why you be subject to your own master, even when he's not being obedient. So this is no license for you to act like a bitch just because he's not doing his job. 
So women, don't don't forget your role because guess what? You're going to be judged on your role. The man is going to be judged on his role. Children are going to be judged in their role. Mm -hmm. Elders, pastors, they're going to all. We all going to be judged on all the hats that we were we were wearing. We're going to be judged, just like King David. King David had a wicked king, King Saul. He was disobedient, and in spite of him, he still was faithful. So don't let it be, well, because this person, you know, I'm, no, I'm, hey, I love pastor, but the pastor wants to go crazy. Guess what? That's not going to affect my salvation. I'm still going to be faithful to the end. That's what I'm striving for. And that's what should be the attitude of everybody. I'm not saying that pastor's going to go crazy. I'm just saying, but that's my mentality. I want to, I have a playbook I can go to. I can say, okay, shoot, pastor is tripping. Now I wouldn't go out and be saying this stuff, but let's just say it, 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 he's just tripping. He's just doing his own thing. Guess what? I can go to the playbook. I could, I could open up my Bible and go there and say, oh, how, how, how did a righteous man handle himself in this situation? Oh, we got an example in David. David did it. He was anointed when King Saul was still alive. And he still did not try to usurp his authority. He still honored him. He wanted to go back to the table, but he was afraid that, hey, this man's trying to kill him. So I know that, hey, pastor's trying to kill me. I don't have to sit at the table and allow him to kill me. I can preserve my life. Why do I know I can preserve my life? Because David did it, and y'all didn't y'all didn't uh, uh, discipline him for 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 preserving his life. Are that's you right. are you following me on this? Oh yeah. So that's what I do. See, it's like this 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 is our playbook, guys. We we have a playbook called the Holy Bible. They some call it the Holy Bible, the Torah, the prophets, the 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 the, the gospels, the epistles. Right here, we have it right here. We just got to use it. Mark it up. Look at this. Highlight it. You see that? I don't know if you can see all this stuff in there with the light, but anyway. So keep reading. So don't let women use this as an excuse to be disrespectful to your husband when he's not doing his part. It may be harder for you, but guess what? It says don't you just, if you go back to Second uh, Peter, if you go back to Second Peter, what does it say here? It says not only to the forward, right? Not only to the good and gentle, but also to the forward, right? Exactly. It says right here, servants, be in verse 18, servants, be subject to your masters with all fear, not only to the good and gentle. So don't just say, well, my husband is not good and gentle. OK, well, maybe he's not good and gentle, but also to the forward, to the to the cruel, to the harsh. For this is a thanksworthy man's conscience towards God that you endure grief and suffer wrongfully. It's better for a woman to suffer wrongfully at the hands of her disobedient husband than for her to be in rebellion. Yeah, I mean, it says it right there in the first uh, chapter we just read in uh, Peter 3 1. It says, yeah. So if he win him over by your chase conversation. Yeah, that's it. Okay, Reed, I just wanted to, wanted to hide because now I'm going to get on the yeah. brother, but I just wanted sisters to say, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Don't be, don't be taking this thing and start, start hey, yeah, husband, don't you, take you, it out of context. Yeah, don't, don't take, take it out of context. <laughs> so this talking to all of us, this talking to brothers and sisters. Oh, Reed, man. while they behold your chase conversation, Coupled with fear. Whose adorning, let it not be that outward adorning of plating the hair and of wearing of gold or of putting on a, of apparel. But let it be the hidden man of the heart and that which is not corruptible, even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit, which is in the sight of Yah of great price. For after this manner in the old time, the holy women also who trusted in Yah adorn themselves, being in subjection unto their own husbands. Even as Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him master, whose daughters ye are, as long as you do well, and are not afraid with any amazement. All right. Now, here's where we bring a balance to it, because it doesn't stop with the women. Say, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. See, a lot of, a lot of men want to read through here and stop. Stop right there. No, there's, there's more. And then it says, Read, read verse seven. What is the, what's the first word said in verse seven? Likewise. Likewise. It's taking us right back to our example, Yeshua. It's taking us right back to our example and Yeshua being the example. Likewise. Likewise, wives. Likewise, husband. Read. Likewise, ye husbands, dwell with them according to knowledge, giving honor to the wife as, un, un, as unto the weaker vessel. See, look at this. It says, According to knowledge, see a lot of men have women and don't have any knowledge on the nature of a, dealing with a woman. Mm. That's like getting uh, that's like getting a car, 
and not having no knowledge on how to drive. You bought this car, but you don't know how to you don't know how to work it. You don't even know how to turn on the car. You don't even know how to to operate. You don't even know how to even when when the thing is on E, you don't even know how to feed it to put put gas in the car. <laughs> you 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 when the lights come on, you 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 it's like you took the manual and you threw it out the window and, or just got rid of it and, and 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 now you don't even have the manual to know how to operate this this vehicle. So you got to know how to dwell with women according to knowledge. And we have all the knowledge that we need right here in this book, right here. Right here. We, we have the knowledge right here. That's it. And if you're part of Straightway Choose Ministry, we have examples before you. Who's doing it well? Exactly. Who's doing it well? Now, are they perfect? No. But they're doing it well. I've never seen anybody do it that well. And I'm only saying that I probably, not that I know anything that's wrong. That's pastor saying that. But man, the way he responds, the way he does things, it just, it blows my mind. I'm just so glad to have a, an amazing leader that's given us an example. Now, people may accuse me of, well, there you go, worshiping pastor again. No, I'm not worshiping pastor. I'm doing exactly what the book says to do. Paul said, follow me. He said, oh, follow Jesus to be all spiritual. He says, follow me as I follow Messiah. That's all I'm doing. And we're going to show you that. It's double honors, book. right? Yeah, yeah, double honors. You're just giving honors. Now read, likewise, ye husband, go. <clears throat> Dwell with them according to knowledge, giving honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel. So look what it says. Given honor. Okay, what type of honor? Is this mean where you worship her? No, this is not worship her. It's saying honor her as unto the weaker vessel. It clearly is telling you that men or women are not equal. Women are weaker than men. Let me say that again. Women are weaker <laughs> than men. Let me say it for a third time. <laughs> women are weaker than men. They are not equal. Don't get caught up in this feminist society that makes it seem that men or women are equal. There is no equality. Women need men. Period. They're weak. And so what, what, what am I saying that? So men, guess what? You can't be upset when your woman don't do, it's, it's not like you. She don't think like you. She don't move. You. Your ways are going to be higher than her ways. Your thoughts are going to be higher than her thoughts. Doesn't that sound familiar? Doesn't y'all say my ways are higher than your thoughts? Exactly. So it's the same thing. So men, you got to understand, you got to deal with these women patiently. Just like put yourself in the woman's role. Don't you want y'all to be patient with you? If, 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 it, 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 the way you treat your woman, you got to ask yourself, if, if, if this is how I treat one, I want y'all to treat me exactly the way I treat my woman and see how that looks like. Now, y'all doesn't worship women. No, he doesn't worship us. He gives us instructions. He teaches us. He puts, he gives us pastors to, accord to his heart, to give us knowledge and understanding. He gives us commandments. Are you giving your women commandments? Mm. A lot of you guys just giving what you just, you want your woman to go get the house clean. You want the woman to, to do stuff for you, but you give her no instructions. Can you imagine if y'all just put us out there and say, I'm going to judge you, but I'm not going to give you any instructions on how to succeed. So then a lot of these women end up being failures. They end up failing in, the, in, in their man's eye because they can't read your mind. I'm so thankful that we have an, uh, an amazing husband in, 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 in Yeshua. He's given us instructions. He's given us an example that we can follow him. How many of you men can say that you have given your woman instructions? How many of you guys can say you have given them a good example that they can follow? Instead, you, instead you get on them, you get on them, and um, because they're not... They're not performing right. You don't even want to take the time to even teach them on how to please you on what you desire. A woman is the reflection of that man. 
Your house is a reflection of you. If your house is disordered, it's a good chance that you may be in disorder too. Elder, I like what you uh, always teach us here is, uh, and I know you got it from uh, your, your, your time in the league and all that. So maybe you can expound on it a little bit, but you know, I know you always tell us here that your job here is to teach and demand and our job is to be available and accountable. What does that, what does that mean? What does that look like? I, I remember it was uh, Mike McCarthy. I'll give him credit for it. Mike McCarthy. I got, I'm not going to uh, plagiarize here. Mike McCarthy. He's now the coach of the Dallas Cowboys, head coach of the Dallas Cowboys. And I remember, and it was so just very short and simple. You, you understood. He said, our job as coaches is to teach and demand. And your job as players is to be available and accountable. Simple. Teach, demand for the coaches, players, be available and accountable. So I say the same thing to my women. I said, wife, woman, hey, your job is to be this, your job is to be available and accountable to me. And my job to you is going to be to teach and demand, to command. I put command, but he says demand, but command. Isn't that what Yah does? Does he not command and teach us? Oh, yeah. And are we not supposed to be to our creator be available and accountable to him? Every time. Wasn't Yahshua available and accountable to his father? His heavenly oh, yeah. father? Are you guys oh, hearing yeah. from me? Did not Yahshua say that he did everything you see him doing, he did because of the things he saw his father do? I don't believe. So, I mean, Yahshua was the perfect son. He was the perfect husband. He was the perfect bride. We have an example right in these books. And to be a part of Straightway Truth Ministry, we have good examples that's alive that we can literally see. I can look at Pastor's family. I can see his children. I can see him like, wow. I can ask a man who's been walking this thing for 30 years, how did you do this? How did you boom, 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 boom? If anything, my trajectory should be even greater than pastor. And a lot of you young men should be even greater than all of us because, man, you have people who's been doing this, living this. And being in this ministry, I'm already see, I see the contrast between being here and when I was in Christianity. And mm. I was knee deep at the highest level of Christianity. I mean, Christianity is a joke. I wouldn't even put it in. The, it's not even on elementary level. It's not even an infant. I don't even know where to put Christianity. It, I know where Christianity belongs in the toilet. That's where Christianity is. It's just in the toilet somewhere. Not even Elder, the same. This, this is Christianity right here. Yeah, that's Christianity right there. Yes, I love that. That is the picture of Christianity. A horse running without his jockey. A headless horse. A headless woman. Hellbound. That's Christianity right there. Post that. If you guys ever think of Christianity, think of a horse without a jockey. That's Christianity. That is Christianity. Thank you for that, that illustration. So what it says, honor your woman as the weaker vessel. So that means she's not going to be equal to you. She's going to be weaker. And you got to understand that. That's why it says when you get a woman, you're going to have trouble in the flesh. So understand, you got to learn to be a teacher. But guess what? If you are not a good son, if you are not a good student, if you're not a good servant, if you're not obeying those who rule over you, you're going to have a hard time teaching her to be something that you're not. See, I'm very confident that whatever woman I get, they're going to be good. You know why? Because I'm a good teacher. I'm a good, I'm a good husband. You know how I know I'm a good husband? It's because... I've had good teachers and I've learned from them. And, and guys, this is not me. Now you may think that, you know, I'm putting, I'm pat, pat, patting my own self in the back. I, I, I played in the NFL. I've had coaches who coaches me. And when those coaches go work for another team, you know what they say? They say, what's your highlight? How do you, how do we know you are a good coach? How do we know that you have what it takes to help us win championships? He says, well, Hey, uh, I coach KGB. Oh, you coach KGB. Man, I was a good player. I mean, I make it on coaches, uh, what do you call it? Biography or their whatever, their resume. They put me their names. Yeah, yep, I coach KGB. Oh, you coach? Oh, okay, okay. Because I'm the glory of that coach. Because that coach had a pour into me. And then I went out to go produce and do the will of that coach. Mm. And he made me look good. But guess what? I made him look good too. 
Can can a coach say, man, that yeah, I coach that. I had my coach induct me into the Packer Hall of Fame. I had college coaches put me on their resume. I have high school coach, one high school coach, Coach Garrett, he would tell you, yep, I coached K- uh, K- Kabir. He was not KGB, he was Kabir. And he had, to, he had to ride me, and he was a good coach. And you know why I was a good coach? Because I was a good player. He made me, he, and he demanded from me. He demanded, he taught, he was patient, but, man, he rode your ass. But at the end of the day, I knew my coach loved me. I knew he cared more about what I did on that football. He cared about me as a person. To this day, I still have a relationship with my high school coach. I can call him up. We don't talk every day, but I can call him up. Boom. It's like we it's like we don't even miss a beat. I, lose. I can call my, my college coach. I can call my pro coach. So it was, be, it was beyond just the game. And they will put me – and and sometimes – you know how I know that that, that I was a, a player that they were proud to be able to say, man, I coach this guy? I, I got a coach in the pros. I, know, I think he's in college now, but he was my pro coach. When he's recruiting somebody, he says, hey. And he, he, I'll get the call. Hey, 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 coach, Jet, what's up? You know, tell me. And then he'll tell me, hey, tell him. I'll say, oh, yeah, Jet, he, good coach, good coach, good coach, yeah. Hey, I, I, I'm the man I was. I was the player I was because of that man. You need Ooh. to listen to that man. How many of your coaches or your teachers or anybody or your parents are saying, hey, that, that's my son. That's my son. See, you see, as, as, a, as a Proverbs 31 woman, you want to be able to, for your husband to bless you. You want, you want to hear your husband say, well done, good and faithful servant. So if, but, but how can you get, how can you get your wife in that position if there's no one speaking, giving a witness about your, your character as a man? Is this making sense, Deacon? Am I just oh, talking? Oh yeah, no, you, no, you, you're right on point. You're- guys, if this making sense to you guys, I see 44 people. Please hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't subscribed. But if this is making sense, by God, please give me a seven. Give me a seven. Please, I just, I just want to see if people are interacting. If they, if they can hear what I'm saying, if this is making sense. Hallelujah. Save me for myself, Deacon, because if I'm not making sense, we can just shut oh, this no, you, down. You're good. I mean, you're coming from the word, Elder. Okay. I have five. We got somebody in a seven. And sometimes this thing is delayed, but I'm going to wait for a little bit more. So, okay, good. So, this is making sense. Hallelujah. I just want to know if this is making sense. So, we got to get on our brothers here because... I'm, I'm saying it's a, it's, a, it's a travesty seeing some of the things I'm seeing in Israel. And I can't, I'm not privy to say a lot of the things, but guys, I'm telling you, I'm, I'm very disappointed in our brothers. Brothers need to, we got these, these women who need directions, who need somebody to love them. But so many of you men just want to get into somebody's panties. You just want to have sex. It's all about sex, but you don't even care about this sister. You're not even looking, like Elder Rufus always talk about, we need to look at these women as our sisters before we look at them as our wife or as our woman. You care more about your sexual pleasure than you care about this woman's salvation. Come on, Elder. Yeshua would care more about our salvation. Man, come on. Finish this reading and then we go to the next one here. But we got to be able to honor them as the weaker vessel. Their women are full of emotions. Sometimes they can't control their emotions it's so because they're so full of, just like a horse. It got so much power. And they need somebody to come in there to harness it and get their, their power to be, to be able to be functional and productive. Yeah. So when you got these women full of emotions, we have to kind of help them to harness that emotion. Some of these, a lot of these women come in with trauma, childhood trauma, trauma or childhood wounds. And then all of a sudden we just want to throw them away because, oh, well, I didn't know you was messed up like that. Instead of saying, hey, let me help you. I've overcome some of my, I got my deliverance. I've overcome some of my things. I can help you overcome yours too. You grew up with a dad. I, I didn't grow up with a dad too. Let me help you out. I've overcome. I was molested. Let me, let me help you out. I can, I can help you to overcome that. Man, man, we're supposed to be the savior of the body. But instead, you got men that want just a perfect wife and, and, and expect no issue. And guys, trust me, I'm not saying that's wrong to not want that. But man, we got to put some work in too. Now, women does not excuse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, elder, speak up. Yeah. No, this does not give women out there to be rebellious. I'm just telling you, men, you got to know if you want a woman 
you gotta you gotta understand get a woman that you can you can rule over. Yeah. I even tell guys too, don't get with a woman that's so fine that you just you just freaking you you can't put, keep your 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 tongue in your mouth. You just like just salivating over this woman. <laughs> if this woman is so fine and, and, and she just makes you just in cloud not bro, don't that's not the woman for you. You're better off getting with an ugly ass woman that 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 you can just say, okay, uh, I love her. I'm going to take care of her. I'm going to rule over. I'm going to help her out. But she's not. I'm not going to put her on this high pedestal that I can't correct her. Some of you guys have these women and you can't correct them because you're afraid to lose them. See, my woman. I'm not afraid to lose her. I will correct her if she wants to leave. Leave. You. We won't be the first. You won't be the first. And she knows it because I, I I have a testimony. I already have a witness. Like, oh yeah, he's not chatting. Yep. So men, you got to be preeminent. You got to try to lead. You can't be afraid to lose. Coaches, when they teach and demand, they weren't afraid that that we would. Well, I'm not gonna play for you. Bye. They'll just cut you and just replace you with somebody better. Yeah. So men, you guys got to understand. You have to live with these women. Understand that they're gonna be weaker vessels. Finish your reading and keep reading. As unto the weaker vessel and as being heirs together of grace of life, that your prayers be not hindered. So, man, this is a serious responsibility. These women, these children are depending on us to do our part. We got to learn how to lead by example. So let's go to Ephesians chapter five, verse 21. And then after that, it's going to just be real quick. And then and then um, I don't, do we have reactions this time? This, uh Yes, yeah, we got reaction. Go to Ephesians chapter 5, verse 21, and read. And we're going to go through the women's guys. We're going to go through the we're going to fly. I usually slow down on the women, but we're going to fly by. But I just want us to know women that just don't, don't, don't use this. Okay. And sometimes, as men, as we teach this stuff, we got to be mindful because we know women are taking like, oh, this is a great opportunity. See, look it. I don't have no. -uh. This is not even for you to even say, hey, you need to listen to this one. No, no, you don't need to do that. He will find it. If he's, in, if he's in this ministry, he'll find it. Read. Submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of Yah. See, submitting yourself one to another. So now they're going to tell us how to submit. doesn't mean, oh, I need to submit myself to my wife. No, it's showing us how we need to submit to one another, how I need to submit to pastor, how I need to love my, uh, my, my, my community, how I need to love my wife. You see what I'm saying? How we relate to one another. And ultimately, we all submitting to Yah in our roles. That's right, yeah. Read. Wives, submit yourself unto your own husbands as unto the master. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church. So look, you, see the, you, see, you see, men, you, you're supposed to, you, the women are supposed to treat you like Christ, like the Messiah. Well, guess what? If they're going to treat us like Messiah, we need to act like Messiah. And we can't do it because it he is. gives us an example. Mm -hmm. See, everybody wants to be treated like Messiah, but they don't want to act like Messiah. See, you can't see. It's like the same way. See, women, we, 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 uh, we men just need to, to understand that we need to play that role. And we have an example. We have all the gospel. We have the whole Torah. We have the whole Bible of a, a plethora of examples on how to be like the Messiah to our women. Read. Even as Christ is the head of the church. And he is the savior of the body. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. See, look, here. the women have to be subjected to us in everything. That means everything. You got to teach them everything. They're not going to figure this thing out. They're in your house. Every man is different. I, and my women say, well, pa no, no, the pastor's not your husband. He, I'm your husband. You need to do what I say. Pastor runs his house. This. Now there's a general, but then there's specific to what's specific to the house of Kabir. So if I'm going to be Christ, I need to act like Christ. But that's not saying that, well, I don't have to treat you because I don't think you're acting like Christ. No, women, that's not what it's saying. <laughs> you need to treat me like Christ even when I'm not acting like Christ. Come on. And men, you need to be like Christ in spite of your woman. Period. Read. Husbands, love your wives even as Christ also loved the church. Okay. So it says, husband, love your wife like what? 
also even, how Christ loved the church. We have to love our women as Christ loved the church. And what did he do? And gave himself for it. You see, he gave himself for it. He wasn't selfish. He gave himself for it. Read. How do you give? Now we're going to see how he did it. We're going to see the example that Paul lays out here, how Messiah gave of himself. Read. That he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. See, look, that means you need to be. How many of you guys, men, are pouring into your women uh, with the word? How many of you guys are doing that? How many of you taking the time and teaching the word or just your everyday life with them, just living life? And when, when they when they run into issues, he says, okay, honey, calm down. Okay, let's let, let's get rid of the crocodile tears. Okay, what's going on? Giving them instructions. Okay, you have a little boo-boo. Let, let, let me give you let me give you instructions on how to fix it. Let me give you instructions. I remember uh, uh I, I'll give you an example here. This is a good example. I, I I was just getting my hair cut and I told my woman, I said, Hey, I need you to get me this book, and I need you to put the information, I need you to put it in your contact or whatever. And she asked me, what well, can I do it after I put the children to bed? And you know, I'm thinking to myself, mm, okay. I said, but wait a minute, wait a minute. I just asked her to do something and she wanted to do something before me. And I, it, now this is up to me. Now I'm not saying this for everybody, this is just for me. But I wanted to use this stressful time in my woman's life to test her and to teach her. I have the right to teach her. Did you guys know that? I actually got that from um, a Peter Ramble book. As a man, just like y'all has a right to test us, we have a right to test our women. That's part of training. See, look at you don't just say, okay, I have this woman and everything is good and boo. No, you got to train her. Just like a football team, a head coach don't just send us out on game day and play. He actually, we have practice, we have training camps. We have all these things so that when game day come, we can be able to perform at a high level. Even these horses, these horses just don't show up on, 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 on game day or race day. They're trained. They have to go through training and, and learn all, how the horse work and the horse got to understand how the jockey, what the jockey wants and, and all this stuff. And so when they, when they all get dressed up and all this stuff, it's game day. Are you guys even taking the time to train your women so that she can perform and succeed? Is this making sense, Deacon? Oh, yeah. Come on, Elder. You got to prepare your woman so she can succeed. So I said, let me use this. I knew it. She said, I'm trying to get the, you know, she had a hard time getting the children to bed. I said, you know something? This is a good time. And I wasn't even thinking at the time, but it just dropped in my spirit, man, because I was getting ready for the show. It dropped in my spirit. I said, no. I said, I called her back. I said, hey, I need you to get this thing done first. Then you take care of the children. Now, most men don't want to do that because they want to hear their woman bitching and complaining. I said, I don't care. Because if she start bitching and complaining, she can go to another room. That's what I would do. I'm going to use this. And then so she got her thing done and she did it. But it was half ass, in my opinion. Some people say, well, she got the information. It was half ass because I want it a certain way. I want the lowercase, uppercase. I want this here. I want that. I, I, I have a specific way of how I want it. So then she can share me the contact and boom, it's the way I want it. Deacon, you know how I like uh, my contacts, if I'm getting somebody's contact. Oh, yeah, yeah. Do you know it? I trained. How you know how I like it? Because you told me how you like it. I had to teach him. I had to teach him how I like it. So I'm here saying, and my woman said, oh, I've done this. Oh, I, I know what you want. And then she said, this is not what I want. Go back and do it again. And it was right when she's trying to get the children to bed. You know how you women can be. And then after she did it, I told her I made the correction. She made the correction. And then after she made the correction, I said, this is how I want it to be all the time. When I tell you to, to put a contact and make a contact and share it with me on our Apple, then, then this is how I want it to be done. Now go take care of the children. And she was flustered a little bit and everything. She, and I expect her to be flustered because she's a woman full of emotions. Ooh. And then... I was able to come back to her and say, as a matter of fact, I text her the scripture, Matthew chapter six. First seek the kingdom and his righteousness. You don't put the children before me. I'm Messiah. You don't put them before me. Don't worry about putting the children to bed. Don't worry about what you're going to eat and what you're going to wear and what you're going to drink. Are not this important in this and that and that? First, seek his kingdom and his righteousness and all. That. I know what you need. I know that she wanted to put the children to bed. What's so, so what if you have to put the children 30 minutes later? What's more important? 
putting the children to bed or serving your king? I, I, I put myself in her shoe. Yeshua, can you hold on for one second? Let, let, let me just say goodbye to my family. I want to follow you. Oh, oh, oh yeah, yeah, sure. What, what I'm saying? Let, let, let me, let me, let me see if I can get my wife on this program before I follow you. Let me, let me just. Can I just? No, no, no. He says, if you mature, he says, what's a prophet man to put his hand on the plow and look back? He's not fit for the kingdom. Are you guys hearing me? See, I, where did I get my example? Why did I not feel bad? Now, if you live in Christianity, you probably think that man, I'm, 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 I'm abusive, controlling, and something, a tyrant. All I was doing is taking the example. I said, let me use this as a teachable moment to train my woman in the way I want her to respond in this situation next time. Are you guys hearing me? Yes, I'm giving you guys examples on how you can, you, 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 you pick your own coaching, your own schedule. And, and it doesn't have to be a schedule. It could just be whatever. It could just be a fly. It could just be like, okay. Fire emergency, woo, just start turning along. Woo, everybody already know what to do because they've been trained. So that's a perfect example. And that was just me. Just I was getting my hair cut, had no intentions of testing my wife. And all of a sudden I called her and it was, in, you know how, you know, you just live in life. And she says, oh, I'm putting the children to bed and this. And I'm thinking, you know something? She should be putting me first, not the children. Because if I let her get away with that, then she'll think it's always about the babies before that it, the children could come before the master. No, 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 no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You give me my food first. But in everything, in everything, you got to teach. And you can't be afraid when they give you their, their attitude. Now, women, you shouldn't be giving attitude. You shouldn't be talking back. Just like Yeshua didn't talk back. He didn't revile when he was reviled. Not my will, but his will be done, he said. So, men, you can't worry about how your woman's going to react. Yeah, if you rebuke her, she's not going to like it. And you're going to tell she doesn't like it. She's going to try to put on a fake smile. She may not put on a smile, but you got to do it because you got to beat her. And, and I'm not saying physically beat her, but you got to buffet her and make her into the image. And to, so you can look and say, wow, well, this is a beautiful, this is, this is my glory. This is my image. She looks more like me now. You got to help that woman to become more like you. She should be a reflection of you. When I see Mother Carol, I see a reflection of Pastor Dow. And any of these women, it's like a reflection of Pastor Dow. I mean, you can tell the work that Pastor put into uh, his woman, especially uh, Mother Carol. You can tell he put in a lot of work in her. She's a beautiful reflection of him. And that's what I'm trying to do with my woman. I'm trying to make her into an image of me. I'm trying to be the image of my Messiah. And I'm glad I have somebody that rules over me that I'm submitted to. And all I want to hear is pastor say, well done, Kabir, Elder Kabir. When pastor comes to the to the uh, to come and visit or any of the leaders come in and visit uh, uh, straightway praise land. Guess what? I'm very mindful. I'm putting on a beautiful show, but I couldn't put on a beautiful show if my if my community is not ready. This is not something that that we just say, OK, guys, the leadership coming. Let's put on a good. No, it's planning. It's training. I have to train them. I do the same thing I do with my family. I do the same thing for my community. I continue to instill in them that I am the husband of this community. You are my brides. And then when I, I, I use pastor's example, pastor's my husband and we are his bride. You are my handmaidens. I continue to instill this and this becomes a way of life. It's not like we open up the Bible and do a Bible study. Yeah, we, we, we talk about the Bible, but we live the word. Am I making this up, uh, Deacon? You here? No, not at all. No, that's exactly what happens. So when, when, when the leadership come, guess what? It's like, it's game day. It's like, hey, this is what we do. We, this is our life. When no one is here, this is what we do. When people are here, this is what we do. So, I, guys, I'm telling you, you got to be able to be a leader. That's why to be a leader in, in, in Israel, if you want to be a, a leader, that's why it's important for you to know how to rule your house. Start with that. No, no, I'll start. I would do better. If you're a single brother, start with yourself. Be a good servant. 
find the person that you are submitted to and you submit to your fully to that person and, and, and to a point where they can say, man, well done, good and faithful brother. That's now it. you have what it takes to teach your woman how to be a good, how to be a disciple of you. Exactly. Anyway, I, I, I guys, I get passionate. I'm, I'm here sweating. Anyway, <laughs> Deacon, keep reading. Where are we? Verse 27. Okay. That he might present it to himself a glorious church. You see, he's presented it to himself. See, I want Bree to look a certain way. Now, Bree wants to look a certain way, but not, that's not what I want, Bree. That's what you want. I want it this way. Woman, this is how I want you to talk to me. This is how I want you to walk. This is how I want you to dress. This is how I want you to, this is how I want you to, to represent my house. It's not about what you think is right. It's about what I want. That's what Yeshua did. He showed us this is what he wants. And then he knew what the father wanted and he did exactly what the father wanted. He even says, glorify me so I may glorify you. Women, you should be trying to glorify your men. Men, you should be trying to glorify those who rule over you. See, I want to make pastor look good. If you always hear me talk about pastor, you always hear me talking good about pastor. See, people may accuse me. I'm worshiping. Yeah, you can say that. I guess so. I guess so. But I know why I'm doing it. I'm doing it for him, for my heavenly father. In conscious sake towards him. None have you have you heard me? Have you heard me, Deacon, ever murmur and complain about Pastor Dow? And his Never, not once. no. I fear even speaking bad about Pastor. I'm, I'm afraid that I may be strike down if I speak bad about Pastor Dow. Not by Pastor Dow himself, but I'm thinking about Yah because he Your can conscious hear towards yeah. That's Yah's anointed. I'm not gonna lay my tongue. On uh, my mouth on Yah's anointed? Are you freaking out of your mind? Shoot, even Pastor, I, hey, you know what I'm saying? Even if I think to speak bad about Pastor Dow, in my dream, I better wake up and apologize and ask for forgiveness. <laughs> you got you, that's how I think. That's how I be thinking. But you know, I'm thinking this is an example for how if I if I can show reverence to Pastor Dow, if Yeshua comes, guess what? Boom. It's gonna be natural. It's gonna be second nature. I don't even have to think about it. A lot of you guys, oh, you, you you're not used to being submitted to anybody. You don't even know what to do when you're when 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 the side come now. Every knee will bow. Every mouth will confess that he's master and savior. That's it. So, guys, I'm just giving you guys some examples here, guys. I'm just this, this is how I think. And so, if this is how I think for myself, what do you think I'm gonna expect from my woman? What do you think I'm gonna expect from my children? What do you think I'm going to expect from the community that I'm leading, the assembly that I'm leading? I'm going to expect them to do the same thing that I would do. You guys see me in examples at the feast. I could be taking a shower. Remember that one time, Deacon, when I was taking a shower and word got out that pastor needs me to, to come up to, to, to his house for something? How, how, yeah. was, was I just mo mo moseling along or whatever? How fast did I move from the shower to the tent, got dressed and ran down there? Oh, it was quick. Kind of how quick when I brought your uh, heart monitor. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah. And I did. And matter of fact, tell them about that. Tell, tell. Oh yeah. Them, tell them about that. That's a per. That's another perfect example. So tell elder them. was uh elder was working. You know, he's he's got a, a gym membership with an undisclosed location. <laughs> Nobody needs to know where. Um, paid but anyway, he left NFL, his heart monitor. Anyway. What's that? Paid by the NFL, but anyway. Exactly. Yeah. So uh, uh he has his heart monitor. You know to track his workout right so he wants to make sure that he's hitting his uh his targeted heart rate and all that stuff right and i was asleep i was it's asleep. early was in the asleep. morning early. It's early in the morning i mean it's not too early but it's early you know i stayed up late the night before all this stuff and uh he called me and i and i, and I answer right away right i answer yes elder it's like are you sleeping i'm like not no more i'm up what do you need <laughs> he's like hey i need you to bring my heart monitor to the gym and i need you to move quick and like right away and i got up and I think, uh, I mean, I think you called me around, I think it was within within five to seven minutes at the most from the call to leaving the house and on my way to go drop off the monitor. And I was, there was school buses behind, in front of me, you know, there was, I'm like, I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna to be there, I'm going to make it. And, and sure enough, I, I made it. I didn't brush my teeth. I said, hey, my master needs me. I need to be there and I will deliver. And, right. and, and I did deliver. 
And and and, and, I, and you asked her, I said, I think like, oh, I don't want to bug him. I forget. I said, no, this is a perfect example. I said, hey, I need you to treat me like Messiah. I said, don't brush your teeth. Don't just get in the car. Get me. And he was moving so fast that Bree almost gave him the wrong one. Yeah. So, <laughs> so I'm glad he, he was a little bit yeah. slow enough that we were able to give him the right one. I was I, literally, I, I was literally reaching for it. As she said, no, you need to take this one. So if I would have been one minute, one minute earlier, yeah, I would have had to turn around. But yeah. either way, you would have got what you needed. So but, but guess what? But I used that as an opportunity. I said, okay, yeah, I forgot something. That's a perfect example. I forgot something. Yeah, see, I'm not perfect. I forgot my heart monitor. You said that's your responsibility. You're right. But guess what? I have a help me in Deacon. Deacon. Hey, I need my stuff right now. I'm in the middle of the work. I totally forgot. I don't have my heart. My, I need you to get that to me right now. I'm at the front door of the gym. Bring it right now. Yep. And he just yep. He just said, "What? I'm sleeping." As a matter of fact, he didn't even tell. I knew he was sleeping. But this is what he was saying: "I'm up. I'm up. I'm up." Oh yeah. See, his response was right. See, he's taking advantage of this opportunity to say, "Let's say if Messiah needed me to do this. How would I respond?" If I can't obey the man who's over me, how can I, that I can see? How can I obey the one that I can't see? Right. And if it's I, because you, you've been a good example because I've seen you move when pastor calls you. It's like, so am I greater than my master? Of course not. So I'm going to move with, with the same amount of haste. I mean, you don't know. I, mean, I tell you this. Pastor, you call me at four o'clock in the morning. I'm up. Oh, pastor, you see, I'm up. I'll well, be I, know up those. For him. I mean, you haven't done that recently, but I remember those days in the early, early days. You know, hey, hey, I need you to come to my office. I'm like, yes, yeah. yes, I'll, I'm, up, I'm up. Obviously, you, you were a brother back then, but yeah, brother. I'm, I'm, exactly. I'm coming up there. Married, so there, was nothing, there was no distraction. Yeah, exactly. So, so, <laughs> so, so, so man, it was like, and guess what? I, and I never even knew I was taking it. And you know what's so crazy? I didn't even know that I was taking him for time that he could be with his woman. He didn't never one time the deacon say, hey, I need to spend time with my woman. You know, can, can this wait? You know, he just, he just was there. And it wasn't until I got my wife said, dang. I wonder how Deacon did that. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, to serve. he never come in, but then you have somebody else that comes in here married. And now everything. Oh, when my wife that, this, yeah. my wife that, and my wife this, and can my wife do this? And can my, never did I hear that from Deacon. I even got to a point I said, Deacon, I think you spoiled me. Because he, one thing <laughs> Deacon told me when he first, he said, I'm going to be one of your best students. That's what he told me. Yeah. But I, I'm saying, maybe maybe I'm scratching. Around. Maybe, maybe I, I said, Deacon, I think you may have spoiled me because I'm expecting from them what I expect from you, from them, and, and and they're complaining. They're bitching and complaining about their wife this and their wife that and, and this and that. How come you? He says, hey, I'm here to serve. We're we, we are here to serve. Me and my mm -hmm. house are here to serve you. That's it. You guys hear what I'm saying? So he's leading by example. So Deacon is doing it from his position. I'm doing it from my position. Right. And we don't expect That's anything why, less from the brothers underneath us. Yeah. I mean, you think we were just ordained because, you know, whatever. No, we were ordained because we show fruit. We were doing this stuff before we were elders and deacons. We were running a tight ship when it comes to running community. And we still have improvement. We still have, there's things that I put before my community of vision. I tell them, this is what we are trying to accomplish. This is what we have done well. These are the things we need to work on. Do yeah. I not do that, deacon? All the time, every time. And everybody on community knows where we're doing well at and what we need to get better at. What are our goals? Does a man, as a man, do you have a vision statement for your family? Do you have a mission statement for your family? Exactly. Do you even have a thing that that your family understand how you operate? What, what do they understand where you're where you're going? Where are we what are we trying to do? Are they just at hazard, just waking up day to day, and not knowing where they're going? As a man, as a leader, you need to give them a vision. If you don't have a vision, the people perish. You got to put it before the people. I see Pastor Daniel Mir, he's on here. We both play ball. Great pastor. So proud of him. But it, our coaches always put that in front of us, what we need to do. We knew what the goal was to get to the Super Bowl, to win games, get to the play, all that stuff. You got to do that in your homes. Treat your family like a yeah. like a. Well, there's football. no vision that people okay. perish, right? Yeah, have things that you're trying to shoot for. Have goals, so that that your family can know that they're doing something. That just it's not just living and just trying to figure this thing out. I have guys on community. I have I have things that I have desired them to do. 
Okay, hey, I need you to do this because I expect you to do this within two or three years. They, I have two, three year, two, two, two to three year plans on brothers on what I expect them to look, what, what, what I expect them to be doing for the community. I'm investing in you. I, I will invest money and time in your education, and I expect you to be here so that you can now pour into the to the to the to the community. Oh. I got brothers on security. I'm poor, man. We spend a lot of money on security. <laughs> I got brother Ryan, the head of my security, just in my ears. I'm like, dang, man, you are spending some money up in here. And he hates, he loves making donations, but he hates when he has to ask for money for church security. And I say, okay, I'm going to invest in you and, and, and Xavier. I'm going to invest in you too. And, and make sure you guys better be making sure you're the best student with Frogman or whatever, whoever's doing the training up there. You better make sure you're the best student. And whatever you learn, you're going to come back and you're going to teach us. That's it. Yep. That's how you have to lead. But a lot of people just, just want to be in leadership role and don't have no vision for the people at all. <clears throat> Let's finish reading here. So it's got, it's got to be beautiful in your eyes. you got to have something. You can say, man, this is what I want. This is what I want my community to look like. This is what I want my family to look like. This is how I want my wife to respond to me. I'm the one that, I remember me and Deacon was talking. I said, you know something? I want my woman to call me master. Remember when we came up with that? Now, I didn't even have a woman at the time. And I stole and, it from you. And then Deacon, <laughs> Deacon went into it, and he started using it before I could use it. <laughs> That's like, how it goes. But we were sitting down coming with ideas and visions for how we want to run our house. And exactly. now our women call us master. But why? Because I wanted to look like this, what I saw in here. If that's, if I want to marry daughters of, of Sarah. So if this is what Sarah did to her, man, then that's what I want my woman to do. Mm -hmm. This has nothing to do with what makes me feel like, oh, yeah, I feel like the man. No, I am the man. Regardless if you call me master or not, I'm the man. But I need you to look a certain way. I want, when people see my woman, they, they, they got to know. I mean, I'll use, I'm, since Pastor Daniel's here, I'm going to use him as an example. I'm, I've known Pastor Daniel for a long time. We played ball together for the Packers. I know his woman, now Mother Chris, but I knew Hallelujah. her as Chris. And, and to see her be a mother in this ministry, Hallelujah. man, Hallelujah. you know what that tells me? That is, that is truly a reflection on Pastor Daniel Meir and what he's poured into that woman. Mm. For her to come from the NFL, to know how women can be so vain and so, so, so just so vain and Jezebelic and for her to come this way and to be submitted to her master and to love him and to follow him wherever he goes, mm. or however he feels he's being led by the most high. Yeah, man, I'm so proud to call her mother Chris, but that has a lot to do with her master, Pastor Daniel Meir. That's it. Yep. She couldn't do that if it wasn't for him. She's a woman and she's full of emotions too. Would it be safe I'm, to say that uh, Pastor <laughs> Pastor Miro, uh, he's been a good jockey with all due respect. He is a, <laughs> he's a big jockey, but I'll leave that alone. Oh, no. <laughs> That's an inside joke, but no. But Pastor Daniel, I'm telling you. But I mean, he is, I mean, that man has poured into that woman. And so that is really a reflection of what he's doing. He became a pastor and she's a mother, rightfully so. Great examples, yeah. So. And I knew Chris before, even when she came in, she came in with her, her I mean, somebody had to give her a head cover. She came in with jeans. She came, mm. she came here with jeans. And now she's she's walking this out as the mother of Israel. Man, hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. I'm just so proud to be a part of this ministry. So brother, that's a well-deserving, she's a wise woman, but she's only wise because she listens to her wise husband. Hallelujah. Man, man, let me let me keep going here before I get emotional up in because that, that, that goes back. Hallelujah. Read. Not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. Verse 28. Mm -hmm. So ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. He that loveth his wife loveth himself for no man ever yet hated his own flesh but nourisheth and cherisheth it even as 
the master, the church. For we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother, and shall be joined unto his wife, and they too shall be one flesh. This is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. So listen to this. So, guys, this great mystery is the same way. I mean, he's talking about a husband and wife relationship, but he's talking about really the Messiah and the assembly, Christ mm -hmm. and the church. So you guys got to understand. So as a man, one of my vision for my house is I want my house to represent Christ and the church, which says according to King James Version, but Messiah and the assembly. I want that. And so that's what I'm always shooting for. That's what I put before my family. That's what it should look like. When people look at it from the outside, they should say, man, that is a house well, uh, that is a house uh, ran well, ruled well. Man, that when I when I see the house of Kabir operating, I see literally the Messiah and the assembly. That's what that's what that's what I desire to see. So it can't just be me expecting my women to just be perfect all the, without, without no instructions. They need me to give them instructions on what I want it to look like. Mm -hmm. When I have people come into my house, I want my house to that I'm whatever I'm controlling or in the rule over, I want it to look a certain way. I want to have a certain feel. Because it's a representation of who I am and what I desire. And if they don't, if my guests don't like it or whatever, uh, you know, we do little surveys or whatever. Hey, you know, you, you know, the, the food was too cold or the bathrooms are dirty or whatever. You know what I'm saying? We'll get it fixed because that re that represents me. Does that make sense? Yes, Elder. All right. Let's go to uh, let's go to Matthew. I want to give you now. I want to give you examples that Yeshua gave us. Concrete examples. I'm going to go through some examples that Yeshua gave us. Go to Matthew chapter 20, verse 25 and 28. Guys, please read on your own, okay? But start at 25. <clears throat> but Yeshua called them unto him and said, Ye know that the princes of the Gentiles exercise dominion over them, and they that are great exercise authority upon them. Stop. You see, this is exactly what a lot of you brothers are doing. In this ministry, you just want to just dominate and have authority over these women. That's what the Gentiles do. They just want to be in control because they want to be the man and have their woman just serving them, uh, you know, what, what they call it, hand and foot. And, and they, they just want to be lazy. They want the, some of these some of these brothers want their women to go go work and, and you go work and they just sit home and play video games all day or, or just sit on their ass. Yeah, I've seen a video about that, a polygynous family where the women are working, he's at home, he's a stay-at-home dad. Like, what the? That is not What's going biblical. On? That's that not, not biblical. example. Nope. What's going on? So this, 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 but that's how the Gentiles act. Yep. That should not be so in Israel. Read. But it shall not be so among you. But who, whosoever will be great among you, let him be your minister. You see, when you get these women, you should be learning, how can I minister to them? How can I serve them? As, a, as, a, as an elder, as a head of community here at Straightway, uh, uh, Wisconsin, guess what? I, I, I'm, I'm, the, I'm the greatest servant. No one can outserve me here. Everything that everybody needs here comes through me. I'm the one that have to make sure everybody has what they need, make sure their teeth are done. I mean, everything closed, right? I mean, do I not make sure that everybody has everything? Oh, yes. Yes, Elder, very you well. You know what my set point is? My set point is me. I'm the set point. What am I mean by that? I love my community the way I love myself. Mm -hmm. if, if, it's, if it's good for me, it's good for them. Come on. I make sure. I mean, there's things that other communities don't do because they don't do it for themselves. But when it comes to me, there's a certain way. That I like things, and I'm commanded to love my neighbors. I love my brothers. I love myself. That's it. Yep. That's what dictates what I do for my community. And damn it, I, I, bless it. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. That's a good catch. A good catch. I got to bless it. But listen, <laughs> I, I'm telling you, I, I, I love myself. And because I love myself, I love my community, and they feel that. Everything has to be done with excellence. Everything has to be done with, I mean, it has to be beautiful. It has to be done with 
I mean, to be, be, be to the details. He can't just be all oh, yeah. No, we are we, we we big on being faithful in the little. Are we not? Are we not big on being faithful in the little? Oh yeah, that's our that's our uh, that's our slogan. That's, that's a slogan for this show, for this channel, for everything we do. Be be faithful in the minutia, in the little. Because if you're faithful in the little, you're gonna be faithful in the big things. Big time. So I love myself, and so this is how, this this is how we should be. We should be ministers, taking care of of those who we, we rule over, not yeah. just using them and abusing them for our own pleasure. Read. Oh, where are we? here we go. But there should not be so among you, but whosoever will be great among you, let him be your minister. Verse 27, and whosoever will be chief among you, let him be your servant. You see, you see right there, let him be your servant. See, that's what I, that's how I see myself. I'm a servant. I literally see myself as a servant. I was a servant the day I came out of my mother's womb. I had to serve my father. And then I went on to, you know, high school, you know, sports, football. I had to serve my coach. I had to serve my college coach. I had to serve my pro coach. And it wasn't until I finally got my first wife which ended up going rogue, but, and that was the first time I finally, you know, had my own position. Like, wow, I'm the head of this woman. Mm -hmm. I'm the head. Actually, I'm the head. This was the first time I experienced being the head, but I felt like I could do a good job because my whole life prepared me to be the head because I was a servant first. Mm. I was the errand boy. When the coach would say, Hey, go come here, watch my children. I, I, coach would come to me and tell me to babysit. Come here, go get this. Go get that. I'll just go to, yes, go to teacher. My teacher would say, give me keys and go get this and go get that. Dad would say, go get me. Go get me water. Son, go get me water. Yes, Baba. Go, you go get him this water. Back in this, I said, yes, sir. But that's how we responded. I would just, we just did what I, I just, that's all I did. I did my whole life. I just did what I was told until I finally made it to the league. Got my first wife, and then for the first time, I saw myself as a leader, as a, mm -hmm. as, as a as a as I'm responsible. I'm responsible. It's not just me anymore. I have to be responsible for another human being. I told this woman, father, that I would. I gave him my word that I would take care of your your daughter all the days of my life. This was not no, you know, just shacking up or whatever. I gave him my word that this is what I would do. And I was faithful to the end. She broke. She broke the covenant, but I was faithful. And I'll even say I'm still doing it now. If 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 they still got the money, because everything they said she has came from me. Yep. Exactly. Now, I, I, but but her her lack her 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 not being faithful is not predicated on me being faithful. I can be faithful in spite of her. Yep. And I am faithful to my words. And I believe that's why Yah has blessed me and gave me a woman better than my first. Giving you more. Give me more. She represents, my new woman represents me more. And we only been together for only, I mean, three years, four, I don't even know, three years going to four. And she is more of a representation of me than my first wife was of 16 years. Mm. Because she chose to be stiff neck and rebellious treacherous treacherous but that's hey that's between her and yah I'm, I'm keep moving but yah has blessed me i can i can't wait to the day i can share what yah has been doing for me but i man i'm telling you I, i'm so glad the first one did leave because it just opened up the door for me to experience the blessing of being a part of this ministry my my family i mean it just man Everything the book says, he says, whatever you lost for, for, for my sake, I will give it back to you a hundredfold. And literally, I know in Job, you see it boom, boom. But guess what? It does. It took time to get from boom, boom. OK, but I'm <laughs> literally witnessing. Deacon is witnessing. We are literally witnessing. Yah multiply me. Oh, yeah. Am I right? Deacon? Oh, yeah. hundred percent. Yep. Wonderful. I'm sorry, guys. We can't move fast. I know, you know we live in the time that everybody wants stuff now. Bah, 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 bah. It takes time. It takes time to get a hundredfold. It takes time. But I'm telling you, I have no doubt 
that in my lifetime, I will see a hundredfold. Everything that I lost, I'm going to see it a hundredfold in this lifetime and the next by the grace of the Most High Yah. Hallelujah. In the name of Yeshua Hamashiach. Touch and agree. Touch and agree. There you go. Or two agree. Agree. Bind here on earth and bind here in heaven as well. Hallelujah. Thank you for touching the green, making that happen. Hallelujah. 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 <clears throat> so keep reading. Even as the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister and to give his life as a ransom for many. For many. I'm literally, see, that's, that's the example. So I have something to shoot for, for many. Did, did you go to 28 or was it to 27? That was 28. Can you, can, can you, uh, uh, there's, there's a reason why I put 28 there, but I, I didn't tell you because it's on there. It's I, I just read it. 28 okay. verse 28. Yeah. Oh, right yep. there. Okay, okay, okay. There you have it for many. There you have it. Okay, go to John chapter 4 34. Now, now, this is what Yeshua says. So, he's going to give us an example. Look what he says in, in Judge Board chapter 4, verse 34. Oh, let me back up here. Give me a second. Where did I put that one? You got little children back there, huh? Oh, you can hear it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. You think I should give them a discipline right there? They, they misrepresent my home. We run a tight ship, right? They're like, they're like you can't Yeah, unfortunately, it. I mean, it's it's our technical difficulty. We're not using the normal mic that I normally use. Yeah. So it's kind of my fault to yourself. So right. Have mercy on me. <laughs> okay. Guys, yeah, John chapter 4, verse 34 says, read. Yeshua saith unto them, my meat is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work. You see that right there? It says, Jesus says, Yeshua says, my meat, my, my, the, most people think food is important just to live. He says, my, my, my whole being, my meat is to do the will of him who sent me. How many of you guys have that attitude? See, I wake up and my desire is to do the will of my father. And I'm so fortunate to be in a ministry to have hierarchy. My my desire is to do the will of Pastor Dow. Because I'm the head of the community here called Straight Way Truth Ministry, but Wisconsin. And I want to do the will of Pastor who's leading the whole ministry. See, I don't run from leadership. I don't run and say, oh, I don't want to, I want to just do my own thing. I remember when I first came into ministry, people said, well, don't, you, you don't need to submit to pastor. You do your own thing, man. You're your own man, man. Just between you and Yeshua. Yeah. But mm -hmm. y'all brought me to pastor. That's it. Because when That's I was it. on my own, I was that, maybe that one sheep. Yeah, 99, but I was the one that got lost. I was about to have my, but, but, but be killed up here. With people here in Wisconsin was literally trying to kill me through my ex-wife. Trying to kill me, bro. I'm just, can you just imagine? Just imagine for a second with me, Deacon. Can you imagine if I knew nothing about straightway and my wife did what she did to me? Or imagine, or imagine I didn't know about straightway and straightway is in the far distance, like they were, and 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 they were just like saying, Hey, uh, you know, you're not part of our church, so we can't really help you. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Imagine Pastor Dow treating me like the pastors here in Wisconsin that I gave millions of dollars to. Mm -mm -mm. I would have been dead, bro. Yeah. Dead, dead. Dead. Yeah. But Pastor Dow, led by example, him and Elder Rufus, Elder Rufus drove, Pastor flew in, and Mother Carol came, and Mother Jennifer came to my aid. Came to my aid. To see the situation, to see my condition, to see what, what was going on. Willing to help out. Didn't even know me like that. I was, I was like, I'm like, I gave him a place to stay. I was humbled that you would come to see. They didn't come to say, hey, we came here in hopes that we could see the stadium. Maybe you can show us people you rub your shoulders with. No, they came just to see me. They didn't come to see me play ball. They, I don't even think Pastor asked me for my autograph. I don't think he's ever asked me for my autograph. I got his autograph, but I mean, <laughs> they didn't ask. They, they didn't get. They, 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 I didn't get. I, all I gave them was a place to stay, to help me. That's the best I could do. They gave me. They gave me brothers. They gave me sisters. 
They put food in my my refrigerator. I could have bought my own food, but you know me, I I didn't really shop that much. I was so depressed. I wasn't trying to eat. Just was trying to sleep. And pastor came all the way down here. Elder Roof is labored, and, and and he does that. And guess what? You guys may say, "Oh, yes, because you." Elder Rufus would do that for anybody. He does that for anybody. Oh yeah. Elder Rufus, man, he he labors, man. I'm talking about his he labors him and pastor, and pastor would drive too. He just in this case he just flew. Sometimes he drive, he fly, whatever. But the point is, he came to see me, and I had pastors only only. Minutes less than 30, less than 15 minutes, Deacon. Yeah, we can go to the package. I, I can drive to the pastor's house right now that I used to go to. I can go to all their houses. I know where they live. They're all in town here. And oh, not yeah. one single pastor in Green Bay, Wisconsin came to help me, to aid me, to even to even see what I was going through, to see if I was right or wrong. I was automatically wrong, automatically wrong. By the testimony of one woman. Mm -mm -mm. So yeah. I'm thankful that Yah put me in this ministry and now I can submit myself because I've always wanted, like I said, I'm used to being a servant anyway. And so this ministry is just a perfect environment for me to submit myself to a righteous rule. Does that make sense? And so when I sit my, my, myself to Pastor Dow and his leadership, guess who I'm really submitting myself to? To Yeshua. How can I say I love Yeshua? How can I say I will submit myself to Yeshua if I can't submit to myself to those who is laboring this, in this ministry? Mm. If I can't submit myself to the one I can see, how can I can say I can submit to the one I cannot see? Mm. Yep. So this is what Yeshua said, and Yeshua showed us how to do it. He came down here and showed us how to do it. Yep. Yah showed us through Yeshua how to submit, how to make your very life the will of him who sent him. Go to, go to John 13, verse 13, 16. Oof. Sorry, sorry. All right, read. If I then, your master, or your Lord and master, have washed your feet, ye also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example that ye should do as I have done to you. Let me, let me read this version. This is, a, <clears throat> this is a scripture verse. It says, then if I, master and teacher, brothers, listen. We need to be, we, we, we just want to be our women's master, but we should be their teacher. Have washed your feet. You also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have gave you an example that you should do as I have done to you. Hmm. Is that, is that, is that, was that it? True. Did you read all of that? Did you read 16? I did. Okay, uh, so, no, I didn't. It was just uh, 14 to 15. Okay, now let me read the 16. It says, in the 16, says, truly, truly, I say unto you, a servant is not greater than his master, nor is the emissary greater than he who sent him. Deacon, I mean, I, now, Deacon, uh, please. I mean, you, when I first became the head of community, right, do you remember some of the things I did that kind of resembles this? Do you remember that? Oh yeah. You when I gave you guys vision thing. on how I wanted our community to be, you know, to run and to and how we, you know, do things. I mean, I not only that, but you literally washed our feet, like for real, for real. Every single one of them. At least the people who were originally here. Yeah, the original people here. And guess yeah. what? You I mean, I don't know, maybe Digging didn't care, he didn't care about football, but most people say, wait a minute, this is KGB. You're getting so you would say, I wash your feet. David, yeah, now, I was ready to be like Peter. You know, let me wash your feet. <laughs> <laughs> I got away. I said, No, I washed the feet of the people that were going to be here to be an example that what we're going to do from here on out for any guest that comes here for the first time. Hallelujah. I can't expect them to do it and say, This is what I want you to do, and I do it myself. And we carry that till this day every time we have we a new carry to this day. 
Mm-hmm. It's kind of hard to do when we have a, a large event, but when people come in for the first time, we wash your feet. Exactly. So when I tell a brother, hey, go wash his feet, they'll say, well, why can't you do it? D- d- does anybody ever tell me that? Never. I'm saying, who do you think started this? Who do you think started? If somebody was to ask me, well, why does it, why does it come here wash feet? And then, and then my brother would say, you know something? It's because he started this whole thing when it came here. But really, who really started? Yeshua started it. That's it. Yep. You see, look, even Brother TJ says, Elder, uh, you can put that up. He says, you read, read what he says right there. It says, uh, Elder Kabir and Rob, I guess an Elder Rob, was uh, washed my feet, and I was in disbelief. Now, if you guys know who Brother TJ Clemens is, he used to play ball too. Now, Brother TJ Clemens, I think, only played five years in the league. I mean, you have the likes of Rob Mathis, NFL future Hall of Famer. You have myself, both a uh, 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 Packer Hall of Famer. I mean, it, for TJ, he understands who we are. He's like, man, these people are great players in the game. Legends. Legends. And, and, yep. and, 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 and on top of that, TJ Clemens, I know he used to be a defense alignment, but he was an office alignment. This is unheard of. This he is got two D linemen <laughs> washing the feet of an old lineman. Be like like Putin washing uh Trump's feet. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. It's but, enemies. You're yeah. supposed to be on, at odds with each other. Yeah. <laughs> but 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 he just tell you what he saw. So same thing, husband, men. We got to look how we can be an example to our women, to our children. We need to be trying to know how to serve them, not worship them. There's a difference between worshiping a woman and serving. Yeah. There's a big difference, meaning making sure they have what they need, making sure they have the clothes, food, shelter, security, control rights, direction. That's part of it. Pouring into them, watering them, not just having sex with them and pumping babies into them. Why don't you pump the word into them? Mm. Pump life into them. Come on, elder. But you just got guys that just want to just get their freak on and don't want to import nothing into these women. If your woman is the same, you should look at yourself. You should get then get what then why she's with you then. That's that what are you doing? And before you get rid of her, look at your life. Where is your walk? Where are you with your walk with the most high? Who's ruling over you? And what do they say about you? Can they say you're faithful? Well done, good and faithful brother. Can they say that about you? Do you have a testimony? Do you have a witness? And most of these guys that's having trouble with their women don't even have a good witness themselves. Mm. Don't even have a good witness. Let my women come. And say something about what I'm not doing. It's going to be hard pressed because I have a witness. Right, Deacon? That's right. 100%. Let, 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 let one of the pastor's women come out. He has a witness. It was, mm-hmm. Yeah, right. But some of these people bring these issues and say, well, my woman's this, my woman's this. But then themselves, well, what do they have to show for? Where, 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 where are you in your walk? Mm-hmm. That's key because the head is sick, the whole body is sick, right? If the head is sick, the whole body is sick. Exactly. So this is the example that Yeshua gave us. Now, let me just show real quick Paul and wrap this up. Let me show you what Paul gave as an example. Go to 1 Corinthians 11, verse 1. I hope you have these one. I hope I share this with you. Um, 1 Corinthians 11, verse yeah. 1. This is what Paul said. Mm-hmm. Be ye followers of Christ? No, he says, be ye followers of me even as I also am a follower of Messiah. Come on. So guess what? So when I'm following Pat, I'm not worshiping pastor. I am just a follower of Pastor Charles Dow Jr. Because he's, as even as he is also to Messiah. Yep. There's nothing wrong with that. The people here is follow me as I follow Messiah. Everybody here is part of straightway. So when they're following me, they're following pastor. And when they're following pastor, they're following Yeshua. Do you see how that works? That's the order. If 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 I'm following my pastor, my wife is following me, then she, we're all following Yeshua at the end of the day. Because even after you see 1 Corinthians 11, the head of every man is who? Messiah. And the mm-hmm. head of woman is who? Man. 
That's and it. the head of uh, Messiah is Elohim, the M Most High, Yah. Go to Hebrews chapter 7. 13 verse 7. I don't believe I have that one. I you don't have that one. You can pull that up on the e-sword here. Yep. You said Hebrews? That's what I'm going off script. Yeah, Hebrews chapter 13, verse 7. Verse 7. Tell me when you get it. I hope you guys are enjoying this stuff. If you guys are having a great time, give me an 8 for great. I got that from Ali. <laughs> <laughs> give me 8 for great. And hit the like button. See 56 people in here. Appreciate you guys. Yep, right there. All right. All right. Okay. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 7. Remember them which have the rule over you, who have spoken unto you the word of Yah, whose faith follow, considering the end of their conversation. So it's saying, consider the end of their behavior. So remember them. So that means, guys, Israel was never meant to just have individual, not this Western culture where everybody's just doing their own thing. Israel was always meant to have, uh, to be in a tribal setting, to have leaders. Even when Moses, when they got big, even Moses had to pick leaders amongst the people to be leaders over a hundred, leaders over thousands, leaders over 50, leaders over 10. So this is how Yah runs the kingdom. If you remember, he says that, well done, good, because you were faithful in the little things, come to your master, he says, and I'll put you over cities. Mm. This is the way the kingdom works. He does not create the kingdom where people can just have their own little homestead and just kind of do their own thing and not be answered, not be accountable to anyone. Yep. Pastor Dow himself, we know he's accountable to the Most High Yah because we can look at his behavior, we can look at his conversation, and we can see this book, and we can see the reflection. We can see Yah's reflection on Pastor Dow based on how he lived because he's walking according to this book. Mm. And you can see how this ministry is being ran and how it operates because that is a reflection. It's the fruit of what Pastor Dow has been doing the last 30 some years. What I am doing is evidence because I, all I'm doing, guys, all I'm doing, if people come in and say, man, you do such a great job, how how you get that? I, I didn't come up with this system. I wish I, I wish I was smart enough to do this on my own, but I didn't. I just listened to the man of Yah. And I learned from him. If anything, all I do is take his, his platform and see if I can tweak it and make it a little bit better, meaning just, just operate at a higher level. Yeah. And then that, I mean, but... The, but the foundation is right there. Mm -hmm. I'm literally building the community I'm building. I'm building off of the foundation that Pastor Dow built. And he's building off of the foundation that he's read in the word. In, in Acts chapter 2, Acts chapter 4. But ultimately, the foundation that Messiah has given us. And we should all be getting better. And the only reason why mine is probably because I, I start at a, at a better place. Because guess what? I have a Pastor Dow. Pastor Dow didn't have anybody before him except what's in this book. So he had to, he even went to his his elder or his his bishop, whoever the person that that was ruling over him, and he was telling me, and they said it would never work. They told him it would never work. I'm so thankful to the Most High Yah that Pastor Dow didn't give up and that he was that he he followed his calling. Because of him, now we was able to come into a place. There he had communities. Now we just add, and I'm just one of 14 communities, I believe. And I think we run a good community. Mm -hmm. But we still have not arrived. We still want to get land. We still aspire to get our own land. This is not where we want to be. This is just a good starting part. But eventually, I, I think we're gonna. It's gonna be like a Jacob moment. It's gonna be like an Israel moment when we leave. We're gonna. We're gonna be. We're gonna be a lot. And we're going to migrate to some place down south, close to the hub. And I'm telling you, Wisconsin, man, that is going to be a sad day in Wisconsin. I believe Yas hold his judgment against Wisconsin because we're here. When we leave, it's man. I touch and agree. Man. <laughs> I think you're right, Elder. They're going to be begging us to stay. Please don't go. Because we know y'all won't destroy this for. For 10 righteous, and we 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 over 10 easy. Easy. 
We're keeping the commandments of Yah. So, man, I tell you, I mean, you watch. I, I can't wait years from now to be able to show you what Yah has done, to remember what, what, what was done before and to see my house multiply. I already got brothers, hundred thousands of hundred thousands of brothers that I see at the feast at the feast and throughout the world. Hallelujah. Go to verse go, go to verse 17 on that one. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 17. And then we will wrap it up with first Timothy. And then let's we'll shut this thing down. First Timothy? You said yeah. 13 what? 13 17. Let me see what's in Hebrew chapter 13, verse 17. What's why do I have that written it down? Says, here? Obey them that have the rule over you. Yes. Okay, let me pull that up real quick. Obey them that have the rule over you and submit yourself for they watch for your souls as they that must give an account that they may do it with joy and not with grief for that is unprofitable for you. That's what a husband should be doing for his woman. He should be, he should be what? Watching for the soul of his woman, of his family and get, and, 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 he, and he must give an account for them. Yep. So it's not about just ruling and just, Hey, I mean, look at David saying, guys, his job is already hard. Let's let him do it without grief. It's already hard enough as this, for it's not really necessarily probable for you. You don't yeah. want to be that horse running without a jockey. When you leave this ministry, you it's like you're running, you, you're the horse running without a jockey now. You want to leave the ministry? Go ahead. This is not the ministry to do that to, guys. I'm just telling you. Because when you do that, you literally just putting yourself to be disqualified yourself. That's it. Exactly. Yep. I don't want to be disqualified. I need me ahead. I need me ahead. I'm not coming. I'm not coming from underneath my covering. Mm -mm. That's that's that is spiritual and physical suicide. Straight up. Go to First yep. Timothy chapter three, verse one seven, and and then we'll go to the uh, wrap it up here. Chapter three, verse seven. You said verse one to seven. So guys, I, I, I'm an overseer, right? I'm an overseer. I'm an elder. And look what it says here. Read. This is a true saying. If a man desire the office of a bishop, or he desireth a good or, work. Or overseer for bishop. Mm -hmm. A overseer then must be blameless, the husband of a wife, mm -hmm. vigilant, sober, of good behavior, given to hospitality. Hospitality. Mm -hmm. Apt to teach. Apt to teach. So, man, I mean, guys, this, these are these are all things that you should be trying to do as your home. It, it, and not that I mean, if you want to be a leader, great. That's 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 to be desired. Great. Amazing. I'm telling you, you may not, you know, but you should shoot for that. But you should be vigilant, sober, good behavior, not somebody always be having bad behavior. Oh, there go. There go. There go Kabir again. No. Given to hospitality. Why do you think I'm big on hospitality? And that, if you want to know why, I'm, when people come to Straight Praise, man, they will tell you, and I would like them to say this because this is what we work hard to is that, man, we are very hospitable when people come. We try to treat like you at a five star, a five diamond hotel. And I can't wait till we get our land. It's going to be off the proverbial chain. <laughs> it will be good enough for kings. Hallelujah. You know, like, bro. I mean, we, we and this is what we're training this community to be. We are servants. Hallelujah. And you have to have the ability to teach. You don't have to be a, an amazing. You just got to be able to teach. Teach what you know. But how can you teach what you know if you're not doing it? You can't expect people to do what you're not doing yourself. All I'm doing is teaching people how to be like me, how I've been successful, what I've done to be successful in life. That's all I'm teaching them. And, and, and based off of obviously what I'm hearing and how I interested, so guys, you see what Pastor said? Look, this is what Pastor said we need to be doing. This is what the book says. That's what I'm doing with you guys. Just teaching you guys, trying to give you guys some concrete ways on how you're going to lead your home. Have a vision. Start hitting this stuff for yourself. Are you doing these things with those who rule over? Who's ruling over you? Ask yourself, okay, I'm here. Am I? Some people may say I'm called by God. Okay, if you're called by God, okay. And I feel like I'm supposed to do my own thing, get my own land. Okay, I got my land. And then look behind you. Is anybody following you? Nope, no one's following you. So it's probably a good chance you wasn't called. Has anybody gave a witness about what you're doing? That's good. 
Does that make sense? Like everybody wants to do their own yes, thing. Yeah. Pastor can say, yeah, I was called. Okay, we know he was called. Why? Because he got people following him. We can see his fruit. People's lives are being changed based off of the example that we're seeing in Pastor Dow. That's not the sole example, but you know what I'm saying. But we have an example before us. We see how he operates in power. He's teaching us how to operate in power. He's teaching us deliverance. He got deliverance. He's teaching us how to get delivered. He teaches us how to be a husband because he's a husband of many. How to be a father. Read. Not given to wine. No shadow boxing. I mean, striker. Mm -hmm. Not greedy of filthy lucre. Mm -hmm. But patient. Not a brawler. Not covetous. Mm. One that ruleth well his own house. Having his children in subjection with all gravity. For if a man know not how to rule his own house, how shall he take care of the church of Yah? So look at so so when we as leaders are trying to figure out who will be lead, uh, leaders in, in in Israel, elders or teacher whatever, we're looking to see how they rule their own house. Are they ruling their house well? When Pastor came here, that maybe I I didn't know he I didn't know that we were uh, up for uh, eldership or deaconship. We didn't know this. All we doing was just trying to be a good, faithful brother, right, Deacon? I mean, my, that's it. I mean, did we say, man, if we do this, man, maybe we could be elder? That that was never the intent. We were just trying to please Pastor Dow. All the things he's taught us, we wanted him to see it being reflected when he came to visit. That's it. Yep. I mean, one time he said, "Hey, next time I come, I want to see a garden." What do we do? I'm talking about man. As soon as gone, guys, we're not gonna have Pastor say that again. We're gonna get a garden. And we start off with some makeshift garden, and then now we got a bigger garden now. Hallelujah. So he made the correction like a husband would do. Hey, I, I, okay, I see what you guys are doing here, but where's your garden? Sorry, Pastor, that won't happen again. I got rebuked. And then I said, guys, who cares what Pastor says? You know, whatever. No, not at all. No, we, we, we got a garden. Pastor wants a garden? We're going to get him a garden. The book says we should build houses. Gardens, so we got a garden, and now we got a bigger one. And man, we invested thousands of dollars for this year's uh, uh, garden. Pastor was talking about security. You know, we we live in a place here that freaking they you know they they'll arrest you for carrying around here, especially if you're not licensed or permission from there. We don't live in Tennessee. We live in we live on Wisconsin land here, and they be finicky up here. It's like living in California sometimes, but. Pastor wanted us to do security, and, and he, he challenged the leaders. He challenged the leaders. He said, a lot of you guys are not doing this stuff because your leader's not doing it. And I took that as like, man, that's he's talking about me. And guess what? I, I was convicted. I came back. I said, guys, we need to get, I don't care. I don't care. We, we, we will show up even if we fail, but we're, we're, that's not going to happen again. You see, that's, that's how you're supposed to respond. And I was so overwhelmed. I'm trying to do this. I'm trying to do this. I'm trying to do this. And I, and I, I was so over. I was overwhelmed. I thought felt like one of the women, my woman, when she's overwhelmed, trying to do things. I'm trying to get. I said, Pastor, okay, Pastor, I'm trying to do this. I'm like, how do we do the security stuff? We can't. We can't just walk out of our yard and just start shooting. If we start shooting, we're gonna have a freaking SWAT team around here. You know what I'm saying? We don't. I mean, yeah, it look like we're in the woods, but you came and shoot a deer out here without DNR coming up here trying to seize your guns. So I said, Pastor, what can we do? It's expensive here. We're just spending money here. Like Pastor said, first of all, he, he calmed me down like a husband would to his wife. He says, calm down. Okay, okay. He says, how many of your guys are really into seriously security? I said, okay. Now we got two guys. I said, okay. All right. Start with those guys. Get those guys to be. I said, well, actually, everybody does got a piece. I said, okay, that's good. He says, well, we're training. Man, it's cost $600. He says, okay. And they have an outdoor, it's free, but it's three minutes, but it's outdoor, it's snowing. He says, that's perfect. That's perfect. Let them go out there. If they're really serious about this stuff, they're going to go practice regardless indoor or outdoor. I mean, yeah. like, after talking to the pastor, I mean, I was, I was full of emotions, overwhelmed, trying to figure out how do I please my master? I want to please my master. And I didn't want to say, well, I'm an elder and who cares what pastors say and forget him and. He doesn't understand what we got up here and it's different. No, 
I literally tried to strive to see how can I please Pastor Dow and to be able to perform the things that he's pushing this ministry to do. So I called him and he gave me some tips on what I can do. And after getting off the phone, I felt like, okay, I, I can do that. That that makes sense. I can do that. And as soon as, that, as, soon as he got my mind kind of like on that, that, and he was able to settle me down. Then I was able to now get my chart. I had a target and I went after it. And so now I'm going to invest in the two brothers to do security. And we invest in a lot of money, thousands of dollars. And now I'm going to invest in them and I can still be strategically and financially uh, frugal or, or financially a good steward of the, the resources that Yah has given us and say, hey, you guys go in there, you learn this stuff. And then I expect you guys to come. In. Actually, it's three guys, three brothers we got invested in security. And you guys go in there and then I expect you three to come back to teach us what we need to do so that, you know, because leaving ministry and we still got to we still got to work. We got to do things to raise money for 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 here. But I was able to go to my master or my husband or husband like or master like or whatever you want to call it. But I was able to go to my pastor and say, I need help. And he gave me solutions. He didn't say, well, figure it out or whatever. I, if you, if you want to learn anything, go to your master at home, not in front of everybody, but you go to him and you ask him and he would teach you if you have ears to hear. So guys, I'm putting myself in the sword to show you guys that the dynamics of how we relate to one another. I'm glad I have somebody that I'm submitted to. I don't run from, from um, being subject to anybody. I, I, I run, I, I run towards it. I'm a man. I'm a man under authority, and I'm a man of authority. Even even Yeshua was, it was so so pleased. I've not seen such great faith like like the centurion when he said that. And because of being in that dynamic, he understood how authority works. He says, "All you have to do is say it, and it's be done." Anyway, finish reading. Not a novice. Lest being lifted up with pride, he fell into the condemnation of the okay, devil. Okay, this is key, guys. I want you to see this. Read this last one. Moreover, he must have a good report of them which are without, lest he fall into reproach and the snare of the devil. So he says, moreover, that he must have a good report of them which are without. Can you put that in the scripture version? I want to show something here. This is what I mean. All you brothers out there, do you think you're in the Hebrew camps or just doing your Hebrew, doing your own thing? It's, that's not how that's not how the kingdom works. We need to have somebody that can give a witness of what we're doing. What does it say right here? And he should what? Even have a good witness from those who are outside, lest he fall into reproach and the snare of the devil. So I want a witness. I'm glad that I, that pastor who's who's not on community here in ten, uh, on on Wisconsin, he's not on Wisconsin, but he can come here. He know he, pa pastor is very smart man. I mean, man, he's been doing community for a long time. He can tell if people work well together. He can tell if there's been fight. He can tell. He can smell it in the air. And he comes here. He sees how we do things. Boom, boom, boom. Oh, the roof. All of them. They, they, they all. Every we, we're there to be. Everybody can sit there and judge and see if we if we look shitty, if we look disorganized. They can see. They can see if we know what we're doing, not what we're doing, whatever. And they can give adjustments. I think Elder Mitchell, I love it. Elder Mitchell always comes up with something. He says, you know something, you guys, there was a time you guys were off on your schedule. I said, okay, Elder, that won't happen again. We'll take care of that. That's not like us. It won't happen again. I got a lot of good tips from Elder Mitchell. They'll come in, tell you what you're doing good. Hey, everything's good, but there's one thing that you lack. And they tell you, and some people just want to hear what they did good. I want to hear what I'm lacking in so I can get better. But so many people want to avoid being criticized. So many people don't want to be rebuked. So many people don't want to be uh, corrected. A, a righteous man loves judgment. Don't be afraid of judgment. Don't be afraid of being corrected. Because when you're being corrected, you should think whoever is correcting you, you should thank them. You should genuinely thank them for taking the time to correct your ass because if they're correcting you, they're showing you that they love you. And in the world that we live in, people are so hateful. They don't even want to tell you when you're doing wrong. They'll just abandon you. 
and don't even give you any reason why they're abandoning you. That's what they do in Christianity. They don't correct you. They just abandon you. This is what they'll tell you. What am I doing wrong? This will tell you. You know what you're doing wrong. No, I don't. Tell me what I'm doing. You know what you, you know what you need to do. You, you, you know what you need to do. How the hell can you operate in an abstract environment like that? <laughs> Literally, to this day, five years later, no one has been able. I've run into people and they can't tell you why they supported my ex-wife. They can't tell you what I did wrong. They say, you know what you did wrong. You, you know, you know, come on, come on, you know. No, I don't know. I don't know what you think. Anyway, so I want to be ruled over. I, I don't mind having somebody tell me. Pastor, that people say, well, Pastor Dow, well, who's telling him? Pastor was in the freaking army, man. He was in the 82nd Airborne. He was being told what to do. He was called everything under the sun except the child of the king. So pastor knows how to submit. He comes from a military background. So us playing football, things of that nature, we know how to submit. We know how to work as a, a unit. You can't just be an individual. That's not how we won games. That's not how you win wars. You have to do it together. You have to be one mind, one spirit, one heartbeat, one team. Not individual, everybody doing their own thing. If you do your own thing, people get killed. You lose games that way. You can't win games doing your own thing. You got to work together. All right. That's it. that's it I have for you all the scripture here. I hope this was edifying. I think we have another segment. Sorry it got long here because we started late. But, D, can you have the reaction? Yeah, we can go to reactions here, Elder. Yeah. You guys know why we disrespect you guys, right? Okay, uh, this looks like for the for the women that love you that get out of pocket, okay? Because there's just like some naturally psychotic women that's like she's gonna, just going to be out of pocket for everyone. So the way uh, there's a doctor, his name is Doctor Egrets. He talks about love and respect, right? And it's in the Bible too, where women are commanded to respect their husbands and husbands are commanded to love their wives, right? And there's a reason for sucks. that. And so when when I feel unloved. You know, we tend to get disrespectful. And then if you feel like I'm disrespecting you, you're going to go out of your way to make sure that I don't feel loved and you're not going to cuddle with me. And it goes into this cycle and you never know when to hop off because it's like, well, do I want to hop off? No, he should hop off. When really it's like, once you know you're in the cycle, you, you should just hop off just for the greater good. Whoever figures it out first. So, yeah, I think that that's a, that's a common thing because um, when men blow up, nobody ever asks, what did she say? And I feel like we should start asking because it's really bad. And it's mad because they... <laughs> hey, hey. <laughs> that... You know, what this woman is saying is so true. You know, it's like, you know, when, uh, you know, she was talking about this circle. Now, I don't know if I agree with the whole uh, thing with the uh, the man uh, stops cuddling with her or whatever, whatever that means. He may just remove his presence because of that. But it's so true. We need to start asking. A lot of time when 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 women are not in their role and the men blow, no one does ask, especially in Christianity. In Christianity. But we got to also look here, too. Are you loving the woman? So I think she used, I don't know what version she used, Deacon, but, you know, it says reverence your husband. The other one is, did she say respect your husband? Respect she your said wife? respect, yeah. For both sides, right? It was equal. She must be No, uh, respect for the husband and then love the wife. Okay. Okay. But anyway, so, but I, I think, I mean, at least I, I was, it's good to see this. I don't know if this is a Christian or secular, but it's good that they brought this stuff up. So what do you think? Yeah, I mean, I think that, I guess from coming from a worldly perspective, that's probably the best advice they can get if they're not mm -hmm. in the truth. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh, when, if they're trying to make a, uh, a bad situation better, I guess. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think that uh, if, if I could flip it another way, it'd be like, you know, Alder, let me ask you, would you rather be loved by your woman or feared? I'd rather her, her fear me. And fear in terms of reverence, right? Reverence, reverence. Exactly. Respect. Yes. It's the same thing with us. We 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 fear you. Now we love him. How do we show him we love him by obeying him? But really, it's based off of a level of reverence. I mean, I mean, look look at how she described love. Her, to her, love meant cuddling. To me, I'm thinking no. Love means providing yeah. food, shelter. You know what I'm saying? A man loves a woman even when she's acting like this. It's, it's sad, mm -hmm. but a man is usually still loving the woman in spite of her her attitude. Now that only lasts for so long. Then once that then. It gets to a point where the man's going to have to put the woman away or give her a bill of divorce. But 
but, but, she, but she said that when she doesn't feel loved, listen to this. She said when she doesn't feel loved, they get disrespectful. So now I'm trying to understand, what do you mean when you don't feel loved? What do you mean feel loved? Are you homeless? Are you are you starving? Are you, you know, what, what, what do you mean you don't feel love? And so that's what I'm trying to, I, she's using biblical statements and stuff like that, but her definition of love, I would, I would love to have been on that interview and ask you, what is your definition of love? When, exactly. did you, when, what do you mean you don't feel love? Because I'm thinking you, you run around butt naked and you freaking, you, 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 you're scrawny because you're not getting any food and you got no clothes. You see what I'm saying? Right. So, she, yep. so, so she said, well, I don't feel love. So she gets disrespectful. So when does a woman have right? And even then, even if a woman is not being so-called love, or uh, well, I don't even know. She didn't, <laughs> it's just backwards. It's just the, the logic is so backwards. But anyway, that's yeah, my reaction. I agree. I agree. I agree. Here's another one here. They don't so much need love. They want respect. If they had to choose between love and respect from their mate, they would choose respect. Women need love. They want to be loved and adored and everything else. Men, different. So I had a psychotherapist called Adam Lane Smith on my podcast, and he said that male depression gets treated like female depression. Men are made to feel loved and accepted when all they want to do is feel capable and powerful. He used this example of the Blitz in World War II. Before the war started, there were these psychiatric wards and they had patients and these patients had been totally comatose unresponsive then the blitz starts so there were fires and there were injuries all over london and there were ambulances and fire engines and there was no one to drive them these men got up and started driving fire engines and ambulances these men that had been unresponsive for years and years and years give a man a purpose and the ability to achieve it and he will crawl over broken glass with mm -hmm. a smile wow that's that's deep uh you know he, he uh that's deep so it's so true. Men just needs, you know, like you just asked a question earlier. Men needs to be respected more than they need to be loved. But another thing too, because we're creating the image and glory of Yah, right? We have we were created with a purpose. If you don't use it, you lose it. Have you? I mean, you you've been in a car accident, uh, Deacon. Oh yeah. Your leg when you weren't using it. You know, you could probably see the difference between the one leg and the other leg. Well, what happened to the leg that yeah. got, became what? Atrophy, right? Right, exactly. Yes, I'm overcompensated. At the yeah, moment. you was overcompensated. There was no, and these guys, they're, they, they're, they, they weren't being used. Their mind went to them. They were, in, they were in a psych ward, you know. But as soon as they had a purpose, you saw that the men came in. You didn't hear about women getting in these trucks. You heard men, and they start doing all these heroic stuff because now they're being used the way they were created to be used. And so men just want to be respected. They don't need love. Their women, the best way a woman can love a husband is by submitting to him, reverencing him, worshiping him, honoring him. That is how a man feels love. So he wants love, but his love has to come from a place of subjection or, or being obedient to him. That's good. Exactly. Yeah, I, I touch and agree. Well, that's it for the reactions, Elder. All right. Well, Aldra, if you have any closing statements or anything that you wanted to touch base before we, we close up here. Well, guys, hey, I just hope that this was edifying to all you brothers out there and sisters. Don't take advantage of this and, you know, think that you, you can't do your part until the man does his part. You can still do your part in spite of him. But brothers, I just want to encourage you, you guys really need to start looking. Find a, find a set point in your mind. I, I don't know if you ever played some type of sports or was part of a team activity at school. It could be in the classroom, whatever, but you got to start looking at your family. Like, okay, this is my team. I'm the captain or I'm the coach or I'm the boss. And I got to get my team from point A to point B and they can't get there without me not giving them the instructions. I need to get them to operate in such a way that no matter what's thrown at the team, we can operate. You guys got to look at yourself. You're the captain. You're the, you're the quarterback. You're the coach. Whatever you got to tell yourself, that's what you need to do for your family. And you got to understand that the people that are following you, they need you to give them instructions. They need you to demand of them. They need you to command them. They need you to rebuke and correct. That's what they need from you. Don't be afraid to lead. Too many men are afraid to lead. Lead. You got all these perfect examples in the Bible. You got perfect examples in the Bible. You have, if you were part of Straightway Truth Ministry, you have an example before you with all the leadership that is that, that's in that Straightway. You have these examples. Use them. 
don't don't let this go go to waste so anyway i just want to encourage you guys to just uh don't be afraid to leave but we got to start men have to start stepping up and taking the, the taking uh charge of the helm of their house and not be looking to the woman to do everything you got to lead her and teach her and be willing to instruct her so i hope this was edifying and i hope this encouraged you guys to get at the helm and and get on that horse and you ride that horse to victory hallelujah hallelujah thank you very much elder for those words and definitely appreciate you taking your time with us and instructing here the men in israel so uh, make sure to like and comment and subscribe if you haven't already saints remember to visit straightway.com uh, uh, for more resources and newsletters if you're interested in fellowship with straightway you can call the dining hall and ask for elder becker the number to call is 615-688-3025 again if you'd like to fellowship with a nearby assembly in your area please call the dining hall ask for elder becker the number to call is 615 615- 688-3025. You can also, also visit straightway.com for contact information. Elder Kabir, thank you All very right. much. Well, hey, it's glad to be here. Brothers, just remember, be an example to your family by obeying those who rule over you. And, um, and you will see things changing in your household. And remember always to be faithful in the little. Shalom, shalom. Shalom.